ball on the Gulf Coast, you can't have a legitimate conversation without mentioning Figer or Blunt. These two schools have produced Mr. Footballs in the state, eight state titles, players who went on to win college championships, Super Bowls, and even a NFL Hall of Famer. So when these teams meet on the gridiron tonight, they mean business. Get ready, because the Battle of Pritchard kicks off another season of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Wheaton, along with Corey LeBounty. On the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. Corey, it's like the rapper Birdman says. When you mention these two schools' names, you better put some respect on it. No doubt about it, Al. These two schools used to be one mile apart. Now that they're separated in some distance, the robbery has not diminished at all. The community comes out at 9 a.m. to start tailgating for a high school football game, folks. It does not get any better than this atmosphere that we're in tonight. It does not. I heard earlier this week they had pre-sold 80 parking spots and five RV slots, Corey. And it's obvious by the smell and the aroma of the tailgating that's going on here that people are out enjoying this beautiful night of high school football. It's a little bit humid. The clouds have come through, but I tell you what, Al, I'm excited to get toe to leather tonight. That's right. It's unity in the community tonight here in the city of Pritchett with Viger versus Blunt. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. Hey guys, that's right. You can almost not mention Fridays without mentioning high school football because there are so excitement when this season starts. And I wanted to give you a little update about the weather. We're coming from Future Ones, the game night weather forecast at 7 p.m., which is in about seven minutes. Be about 81 degrees with 89% humidity and only a 5% chance of rain. So it looks like the rain was earlier tonight. Hopefully we won't see any more of that. At eight o'clock, the temperature drop, starts dropping throughout the night just a little bit. It goes into 80 at nine o'clock, 79, and at 10 at 78. Even though the temperature is dropping, that humidity continues to rise. So hopefully that humidity won't affect us too much, but we can expect it to be a wet and muggy night tonight. All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. Corey, we went down on the field early and talked to the coaches. The field was in better shape than I thought it would be based on the rain we had today. Yeah, you look at this being game one or week zero of high school football. The grass is green. The yeah. cleats throughout the game will have an opportunity to dig up some of that great grass that's right here on this field. But slippery conditions are what I'm going to keep an eye on early because you look at both these teams want to be able to sustain a running game. But with the conditions of the field being a little bit slippery, it may change the game plan a lot. You're right about that. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for tonight. Blunt is the home team, so we're going to show you their starting lineups for offense and defense. We'll get that up for you here because tonight we're expecting to see a lot of these jamming juniors for Blunt tonight, Corey. A loaded 2021 class the Blunt Leopards have. And as you see, I'm strolling across there, Emerson Strives and wide receiver. Also, Jaharvey Reese at tight end across the front for that Blunt, blunt offensive line. They're averaging 268 pounds, a bit smaller than they were last year. Corey, we know Lee Hunter, the big 6'5", junior plays offense and defense, so his name his name is not included, but his weight is definitely included on the defensive side tonight, Corey. And I think that's something to take a look at out throughout tonight's contest is the big beef on the field, how they will react to the humidity. Right. You're in the pads now. You've been practicing for a couple of weeks and there's nothing that can simulate game like simulations in this situation because you have 48 minutes to where these two teams are going to get after it we'll have our heat and water timeouts but actually playing against an opponent at full speed it'll be fun and let's take a look at the Viger Wolves offensive lineup as the folks are down on the field right now getting ready for the coin toss. Brennan May Jordan getting his first start sophomore tonight. And also for Viger tonight, a late scratch. Trayvon Lewis, sophomore wide receiver. He won't be starting tonight, but Benjamin Bennett's going to take a lot of that load. Also across that front for Viger, they're averaging 277 pounds. They have one returning starter. I'm sorry, three on offense. Demontre Pritchett, the center also uh, for them. Mr. Everything for Viger, Sidney Williams, who also plays cornerback for them as well, Corey. He'll be uh, starting uh, for them on defense and their defensive front. They play a 4-3 for Viger, averages 240 pounds across the front, just like Blunt, a bit down in the weight from last year. But uh, this is a young secondary here for Coach Derek Scott. He lost 
10 starters on this defense, Corey. Unbelievable. When you look at a team one year ago that played in the state championship game, you have to put that in your rearview mirror because you're trying to replace 10 guys who are starting on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. So essentially, you're fielding a brand new team. It's going to be up to coach to get these guys ready early. These right. reps that they're playing in this valuable contest, the value of the Battle of Pritchard, it's going to be interesting to see what happens throughout the game and who steps up. And speaking of that, Corey, with your checklist, I know you have a couple things both of these teams need to be on the lookout for tonight for Blunt and for Viger. Yeah, when you take a look at the Viger Wolves, they have to limit the number of turnovers and explosive plays. What Coach Scott talked about is a run over 10 yards and a pass over 15 yards on the Blunt Leopards. They have to be a successful running wolf pack. You know, behind that big offensive line that they have, they must sustain positive yardage and control the line of scrimmage. And also, who's the next big name to come away for the Viagra Wolves? Last year, they signed probably three or four division power five players. Okay. This year, they're looking to find who's going to be the man. For Blunt, you're looking at them having to start fast and finish strong. That's the emphasis of Coach Lev Holly. He wants to see how his Leopards are going to come out and finish. And they also have to make Viger dial up long down and distance situations. Right. That's very important for the Wolf Pack to establish short yardage situations. If Blunt can keep uh, Viger in long distance situations, it may be a long night for the Wolf Pack. And they have to play with solid special teams. The Leopards make sure they're running their lanes, make sure they keep their integrity on kickoffs and don't give up that big explosive special team play. All right, there's your checklist. It's coming up right there as you just talked about starting fast and finish strong. Blunt's got a lot on their plate tonight. We just talked about their jamming juniors. Four of them are in the top 31 for the state, so we'll be talking about those four players, and I'm sure they are definitely going to be making an impact tonight during this ball game. Corey, I know you got your impact players for both teams as well, and uh, some may be familiar, but some may be new to some of our viewers tonight. Without question, Sidney Williams, the wide receiver, defense a back punt returner, kickoff returner, the all everything. He has several power five offers, does Sidney Williams. He's going to be an impact player for the Viagra Wolves. On the other side of the football, you look at a couple of names that you're going to get to know as this 2019 season unfolds. Gotcha. You look at Sidney Collins. He's a three-year starter at linebacker. He's the signal caller, has a lot of reps in his game, and he, we're, he's going to be very active tonight. Also, you look at quarterback LaMarcus Brown and another impact player, Lee Hunter, the big defensive lineman for the Blunt Leopards, is going to make a huge difference in tonight's contest. Oh, yeah. Both teams are fired up tonight. Actually, this stadium is on fire. Corey, speaking of the fire, you can see some of the smoke billowing in the distance from some of that uh, smoking and barbecuing that's been going on. And we walked up today. It was a little drizzled, but it was sure smelling good, Brother LeBounty. Without question, Al. Again, this is the Battle of Pritchard. You can throw the records out of the window because when both of these teams get together, anything can happen. These guys grew up together playing park ball. I talked to Coach Ben Harris earlier today. Okay. He wanted to go ahead and send his condolences over to the Viagra Wolfpack Nation, and we'll get into why that is later on. But he said this game meant so much to him because the guys growing up, they might have had a brother or sister that played for the other schools. So right. when the community comes together for these 48 minutes, they don't like each other too well. But while <laughs> the game's over, they get along so well, and it's just unity in the community. It absolutely is. The Sprinkles has, have gotten out of here, and uh, we're getting ready for kickoff right here as Blunt is going to be getting ready to kick this ball off to Viger. Viger will be starting off on offense first tonight, so uh, we'll get a look at that young quarterback for them, Brennan May Jordan, as you talked about him earlier, sophomore, getting his first start tonight. Not a, I've had a chance to talk to Coach Derek Scott at Media Days, Corey, and I asked him, I said, well, is rebuild the word? He said, no, it's more so of a refocus this year for the Viagra Wolves. And that's exactly what it is. Who's the man? You know, you've been and played in the state championship one year ago if you were on this roster. So you know what it means to go deep into the playoffs. You know what it means to put that Wolfpack uniform on. Now we're going to get a chance for you to step up and be the next man in line. Back to return this for Viger is Sidney Williams and Tyshawn Jones. Kind of a little pooch kick, and it gets out to Benjamin Bennett, who catches it at about the 30, 
and brings it up to the 33-yard line. So, Corey, we are underway for the 2019 season of high school football. Yeah, the Biker Wolves, again, are going to come out and try to establish the running game because that's what Coach Scott and offensive coordinator Eric Scott in his fifth year leading this Biker Wolf Pack team loves to do. They want to establish some confidence early for Brennan May Jordan, the 5'10", 160-pound sophomore who will now be taking over for Kyle Walker at quarterback this season. Jordan lined up there in the backfield. Up. Trips at the top, as we talked about earlier. Flag on the play before I could get my words out, Corey, but this is, can be expected. It's the first game of the season. A nice hard count by the Viagra Wolf Pack. May Blunt jump off sides, and we'll get that old dirty rag on the field early. So Viger picks up a free five right there. First game of the season. Two things. Coach. Blue team. As our uh, referee, John Beer, with the rest of the crew right there, as I was just saying, Corey, first game of the season, you expect some penalties. Also, be cautious of the humidity and maybe some timeouts as we'll be observing heat timeouts. First dead ball under six minutes. And, Corey, as, as I just said, there's another flag. And like you just mentioned, to be expected, that old dirty rag comes out, and I expect it to come out several times this evening. Fighting! Gonna walk off so five. that five yards hey. gonna come back against Vigo. Let's take a look at your impact players for the Vigo Wolves for tonight. Again, I mentioned the dynamic wide receiver slash defensive back, Sidney Williams for the Wolfpack, and that's going to be critical. You look at him, he'll be all over the field. You want to get your best playmaker the ball earlier on both sides of the football, whether he's intercepting the ball or catching the football. He's lined up at the bottom of the screen right now. And we have had three penalties in a row. So, Corey, I can say uh, in all my years of broadcasting, I've never started a game with three penalties back to back to back. Dead ball. Ball start. So that'll push Viger back five more yards. It's just one of those situations to where you want to demonstrate discipline early. Both coaches preach to us about that. So if you have that discipline early by both teams, you eliminate a lot of these flags. So if I'm correct, Corey, it should be about first and 15 for the Viger Wolves, and they've yet to run a play from scrimmage this season. Viger lining up in the same formation as they have done. May Jordan steps back and airs it out and connects and gets that ball out to Jeremy Labazon. Picks up a couple yards back to probably the original line of scrimmage. Good catch by Labazon, the 6'10", 210-pound senior. That's a big-time catch to get a little confidence for the Wolfpack. Second down, and we'll say it's about 10 yards for Viger back to the close to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe about second and nine here. Those trips to the bottom of the screen right now. A little quick out to Sidney Williams. He's the athlete, and they wrap him up. And that's going to take us to third down. Let's take a look at the blunt impact players as we report this next play goes off there. Jamar LaMarcus Brown, rather, the junior quarterback, took very valuable reps one season ago. And Lee Hunter, the dynamic defensive end who has so many defensive tackle, has so many power five offers. Again, you mentioned it at the earlier in the broadcast. This 2021 Blunt class is extremely loaded. Biger sticking with this same formation. May Jordan decides to keep it, and he goes nowhere as he is wrapped up. And that's going to take Viger to fourth down, and they're going to bring on the punting crew. Yeah, it's one of those situations that Lee Hunter was able to get in the backfield and disrupt it. Wasn't able to wrap up, but it'll be the first punting opportunity that we'll see for this Wolfpack team tonight. Back to receive for Viger. Armani Diamond and Jordan Harris Mitchell. A little short punt there just over the midfield strike from Thaddeus Williams. And now we'll get our first look at the Blunt Lepers for the 2019 season as they take control right about their own 48-yard line. And that first drive was muddled by penalties on both sides of the football. And now you look at 
Coach Holly breaks it down into zones. In the 20 inside the 20 yard line, when you have 80 yards to go, he calls that the black zone. Anywhere from the 20 to the 50, he calls that the blue zone. And you know what the red zone is inside the 20. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities for offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson to call his shots. LaMarcus Brown takes to the field. One of those jamming juniors for Blunt. We'll talk about that in the season he had last year. A lot of people have him on the radar, one of the top prospects of the 2021 class. First handoff to Jarris Williams, just like they started last season. He picks up two or three for first down. Jarris Williams, the 5'11", 190-pound junior, rushed for over 1,198 yards last year with 13 touchdowns. He's also a versatile wide receiver coming out of the backfield with 12 receptions also. Second and about seven here for the Blunt Leopards as they're, as they're they are just past the midfield stripe. Biger plays a 4-3 defense. Handoff once again to Williams. Busts his way up for a couple. Maybe we'll give him three or four on there, and it'll be third down and short for the Leopards as they're staying in front of the sticks, Corey. Quentin Summers on the tackle for the Wolfpack. And when you're looking at a situation where it's third down and short, exactly where this Leopard offense wants to continue to get fresh lap downs. Big fullback Ty Smith checks into the backfield. Possibly another run here coming up for Blunt. They hand it off to Williams. He cuts around the edge. I believe that's enough for the first down. It's going to be close, Al. You're right, Corey. I'm looking at the uh, the down marker and not the line to gain. So it does appear they are a bit short. You said it right. So it's fourth and short for Blunt. They're in no man's land. Too far to kick a field goal, but not far enough too close to punt it away. So they're going to just go for this. Well, I tell you what, when you have a quarterback like LaMarcus Brown and Jarris Williams in the backfield, you can get this yard right here if you're the Leopards. You got your big block in there, Ty Smith. Direct snap to Brown. Does he have enough to get past? I believe he does based on where we are on top of the press box here. So that should be a first down for Blunt. The fresh set of downs will allow, again, offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson in his fifth year as the offensive coordinator for head coach Lev Holly to get a fresh set of plays in. And again, Blunt likes to sustain the running game also. They want to play with a little bit quicker tempo as the new rule spots the ball. The 40-second play clock starts as soon as the ball is spotted. That is a very good option. Observation, Corey, new rule this year. So far, the kids have adjusted well to it, just had those mental mistakes with those penalties on Vigar's first drive. Now, that particular play stifled by the Wolves' defense. And again, the Leopards have not been able to get that type of push at the line of scrimmage that they really want to establish. But I'll tell you what, if Williams gets beyond the line of scrimmage, you can go ahead and put six points on the board for the Leopards. You can definitely see how his game has matured from last year to this year as a junior. He got a lot of that workload last year as a sophomore. I was watching the game last night at the house, and it was pretty much Williams left, Williams right as Blunt continued to run. But you can see how he has slimmed down a bit, Corey, and he's, uh, he's got some speed on those uh, feet there. Brown keeps it up the middle, getting close to another first down, maybe a yard or two short. It's going to be third down for the Leopards as they are moving into Wolves territory deeply here. And LaMarcus Brown has offers from Alcorn State, FAU, UNA, UAB, and Grambling, and he's only a junior, so those offers will continue to increase. He doesn't really have the dynamics that Kadarius Tony once had, but I think he'll continue to grow into his skill set, has a great knowledge of the game. Third and about two here for Blunt. Everything has been on the ground so far. Williams and Brown, and Brown is on the loose. And Corey looks like he is headed toward pay dirt. He hits the end zone. And that is a touchdown, about a 34-yard scamper for LaMarcus Brown, the first score of the season for the Blunt Leopard. And that's a huge play. We were waiting for that push, and just the speed is shown by the quarterback, LaMarcus Brown. We talked about Kadarius Toney, him growing into that role. Well, just then, he showed the speed that he has. Yes, he did. Before the ball game, we talked to Coach Lev Holly, I asked him, oh, how's the kicking game? How's your confidence? Or are we going to see some uh, two-point tries tonight? He said he feels pretty good. So right now they're going to line up for the point after with LaMarcus Brown attempting to kick it. The kick is up, and it is no good. So Blunt is on top six to nothing. We'll be back with more action with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. 
when it comes to getting your child through school, at times, it can be overwhelming. What school to choose, what classes to take, how to apply for college. To help answer these questions and more, we would like to invite you to join us on Parent Connect as we take an in-depth look at some of the issues and concerns you may have about your child's education. So get connected with Parent Connect, weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. Welcome back to the campus of Blunt High School. It is Lud Goodfield. We're at Harris Terry Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corley Bounty on the sidelines. It is Kimberly Dunn, our first ball game of the season. Corey, a 32-yard scamper from LaMarcus Brown. And a great gallop, and you call that the galloping ghost because no one even saw him or barely laid a hand on him until he crossed that goal line. It's gonna be very important that Viger has some type of answer and sustain some type of momentum on this second opportunity filled with penalties on the first drive. Brown pooched the first one, but he gets this one back to Tyshawn Jones. Jones comes up the middle, gets a pretty good run back, and Viger starting about where they were on their first series. Let's take a look at both of these coaches and our coaches' comparison. Lev Holly and Derek Scott, they're quite familiar with each other. Both of them coached together at Viger. There's Derek Scott heading to his fifth year. His twin brother is Eric Scott. He's the offensive coordinator. And looking at the bottom, Corey, influenced by Kerry Stevenson, Todd Watson, and Steve Allen, some big names there. And right across from him, Coach Lev Holly going into his fifth year as well. Check out his hobbies, family, golf, and hunting. Also influenced by Kerry Stevens, Stevenson, Terry Curtis, and Danny Powell, both of them coached under Coach Kerry Stevenson when he was at Viger years ago. And that's one of the biggest things, the influence that Coach Kerry Stevenson had on this Viger Wolfpack program. Right. Now Coach Stevenson is on the University of Tennessee's coaching staff, and he's made a difference in many of a men, young men's life. And also another name on there, Danny Powell, longtime coach up at Jackson, where uh, Coach Holly graduated high school from him, up in the Jackson area. Yeah, I mean, you can't say Jackson Aggie football without mentioning Coach Powell, but positive yards uh, not gained right there by the Wolfpack. Viger hands it off, trying to get a couple of yards up the middle, but that is stopped by your big guy, Lee Hunter, one of your impact players, Corey, and he is sure enough a beast coming in at about 6'5 and 292 as he wraps up the Wolves, pushes them to third down. Yeah, it's one of those situations to where with big Lee Hunter, you have to decide whether you want to double team him because he's <laughs> able to whoop whoop you at the line of scrimmage. I saw him in the spring game against LaFleur, and they tried to bring the double team, and he was splitting the double team. That's right. how impactful he is as a player. Leopards all over May Jordan, and they frustrate him, and he falls to the ground. No gain on that, and it's going to push Viger to fourth down and our second time looking at the punting crew. Yeah, and that's a situation to where I just mentioned that Viger can ill afford to go three and out in that situation. They needed something positive to happen. Lee Hunter again in the backfield as he probably will be all night long. And the Leopards are going to have an opportunity here to get a good return as Jordan Harris Mitchell is deep. As well as Armani Diamond deep for the Leopards. 5'10 in the first quarter. Nice punt there by Thaddeus Williams. Diamond's going to let it just die right there. And with this being the first dead ball under six minutes, Corey, I think we may get a heat timeout. Let's see if our referee is going to acknowledge that, even though it is a switch over and he officially calls it. So we're at exactly five minutes here in the first quarter. And we're having our first heat timeout. Remember the first five or six weeks, first dead ball under six minutes, we will have a heat timeout, let the guys get some water. And since we're doing that, we're going to check in once again with Kimberly Dunn down on the field. What's up, Kimberly? Hey, guys. One of the exciting things that I like about being on the field is I kind of get to see and up close about what's going on down here. And something that I'm really enjoying watching from this young and fresh Viger team is they have a lot of camaraderie amongst each other, and they're supporting each other after each play. They're patting each other on the back. So even though they're a young and, and maybe inexperienced team this year because of the loss of so many starters last year, they're still encouraging one another. They still have a lot of confidence in themselves, and now they just have to get that discipline under their belt. So it's not necessarily how you start the game, but how you finish it. 
Thank you, Kimberly. You're right about that. Ask Coach Derek Scott before the game. Next to winning the game, what do you want to see from your team? And he kind of echoed what she said. He wants to see who's going to step up, who's going to accept the challenge, who's going to handle the pressure tonight, Corey. That's going to be coming at the Viger Wolves. Yeah, it's going to be up to this Wolfpack team right here to stop Blunt on this drive. You don't want them to be able to march down the field or have a quick score, taking any and all momentum that you have early in the first quarter. Ball about the 38-yard line, a little quick toss there for Blunt to Cameron Gray's little end-around action. Let's see where they spot this at. They're about right in front of us, Corey. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Looks like they're putting it. Yeah, you're right about the 48-yard line. Ball spotted directly in front of us here atop the press box. Take a look at the replay here. Nice end around by Graves. Yeah, good job of taking the end and pushing it on. They're going to go ahead, and it's a situation to where running the football, Blunt had a lot of success, a little trickeration early by Alonzo Johnson. So we'll call it second and one here as Blunt appro approaching the midfield strike. Flag on the play as you saw some movement from one of the uh, Leopards there. So Blunt, great opportunity to get a quick first down, pushes them back five yards. So that, uh, ball. ball start, blue team, repeat second down. That second and one now goes to about second and six score. Yeah, the Wolfpack caught a break in that situation. Let's see if they can capitalize. Hand off to Williams, and the Wolves are wrapping him up as they get in to try to bring him down. Gang tackling led by Demarcus Jones and uh, Devin Caldwell. Sidney Tucker also on the play, the 6'1", 230-pound senior disrupting that backfield of the Leopards, and you can see how one play right. can automatically change the position or change momentum. Blunt was going, now they're trying to go quickly and try to catch Viger off guard here. Coach Holly wants his kids to show that discipline tonight. Next to winning the game, he wants them to stay focused, play blunt culture football, that brick by brick mentality. And right now they got to buckle down third and a long six. Look quick out to Grays, and that pass is interrupted, incomplete. And it takes Blunt to fourth down, and we'll get our first look at the Blunt kicking team on that coverage there. Devontae Harris, score. The 6'1", 180-pound junior timing it exactly the way he needed to, deflecting that football away without being called for the pass interference. That's the stop that the Wolf Pack needed. Blunt wanted to try to gain a little momentum, didn't do it on that particular drive. Now let's see if the Wolf Pack can get a big play on special teams. The Virgil Smith back to punt this away for the Leopards. Gets a nice punt there. Sidney Williams catches it, and he is immediately downed at about the 27-yard line. So Viger gets the ball at 3.57 remaining here in the first quarter. Corey, each one of their possessions has started right about the 33, 34-yard line right here at the 27, but we haven't seen them produce anything. Yeah, prime real estate for the Wolf Pack to open up that playbook. And you look at offensive coordinator Eric Scott being able to do that with a young offensive line and an inexperienced quarterback. So all he has to do is establish some type of confidence. Brennan May Jordan, all he needs to do is complete one or two passes, and I guarantee he'll forget all about him getting his first start as a Wolfpack quarterback. Very young offense, only three returning starters as they hand that one off up the middle. Goes to Michael Towner, gets a couple yards. Towner also serves as the backup quarterback, and he is a freshman quarterback. but he's a pretty big guy as he stands right there to Brennan May Jordan, a little bigger than him. Yeah, great job of Blunt right there coming from the weak side, making sure that the runner didn't get beyond the line of scrimmage. And here it is now, going to bring up probably a little cramp. Our first cramp of the evening is going to be had by Sidney Collins of the Blunt Leopards. You talked about him earlier in the contest. He's a senior. He was on that team last year, so he's looking to uh, add a little leadership here for the Blunt Leopards this season. Yeah, just Kimberly Dunn talked about it earlier in the broadcast, just the humidity being at close to 89% 
on the field. And once you get those pads going, the guys are hydrated properly. That's right. one of the things I know the coaching staff did, but you just cannot simulate the type of heat that's out here on the field. And speaking of Kimberly Dunn, so far she's done a pretty good job on her future ones forecast. Corey, I haven't felt a raindrop in about, let's say, uh, 20 minutes. So uh, we're going to have to get uh, Kimberly some of that tailgating food at halftime and let her enjoy herself. <laughs> no question about it. A great job by Kimberly Dunn predicting that future ones forecast. Second down here for the Biger Wolves as play resumes. Collins and Tyshawn Jones at the bottom set up the screen to Collins, and he gets some yards. I'm sorry, Sidney Williams. There's a Sidney Collins for Blunder just checked out, but Williams gets a pretty good game right there. It's going to be close to the first down marker. Let's see what they spot this at. Leslie Dewberry finishing off the tackle for the Blunt defense. He's 6'1", 225 pound senior, and that's the type of confidence that you want to see if you're your quarterback getting it to your best ball player right there out on the edge. Third and short for the Viger Wolves trying to pick up their first first down. They want to make the clock their ally. You know they're a young, inexperienced squad. May Jordan across the uh, line to make, and it appears if he's going to have a first down. And that's Viger's first first down of the game. And again, that one completion turned into a quarterback keeper on third down and short. They're able to sustain this drive and get a fresh set of downs. 252 remaining here in the first quarter at Harris Terry Stadium on the campus of Blunt High School. Al Wheaton, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. You're watching the Battle of Pritchard, Unity in the Community, Viger versus Blunt. Corey and I got to thank all the viewers over the years. They make this one of our highest watched telecast that we have for the MCPSS High School football game of the week. I agree with you. If it wasn't for the fans, we have fans still filing in. You're right to Harris Terry Stadium here in Pritchard, Alabama. And that's exactly what this robbery means to this community because as we continue to get shots throughout the game, you'll see the stands totally packed. About a four yard gain there for May Jordan on the keeper. Viger trying to approach the midfield strike. So quick out to Williams, the tip drill could have happened there, but the ball ricocheted another direction, so it takes Viger to third down. Good coverage by the blunt cornerback, Jordan Harris Mitchell, the 5'10", 175-pound senior. The ball was a little bit high in that situation. You would like to have seen him throw it to where it give him a chance to catch it and run with it, but nonetheless, it's going to bring up third down and about six yards to go for the Viger Wolves. And if I'm offensive coordinator Eric Scott, I either want to keep this ball in Brendan May Jordan's hand with the quarterback keeper, or again, go right back at Sidney Williams again, because he's got his one-on-one -on -one matchup that he wants with Jordan Harris Mitchell. So if you throw a good ball, it gives Williams an opportunity to go up and try to get it. Last year in this game, Jordan Harris Mitchell picked off the first pass from Kyle Walker on the first play from scrimmage, had an interception last year. So he definitely wants to stick with uh, Sidney Williams right there at the bottom of the screen as he is lined up right there at the 40-yard line. Quick rush by Blunt. They blitz across the edge. Jamar Booker coming in from the linebacker position and gets the sack, but there is a flag on the play late coming in there, Corey. Probably a horse collar on the play because you look at the quarterback, Jordan, he ducked down and tried to avoid that outside linebacker blitz. Perfectly timed, but you have to do it in a textbook manner without being called for a penalty flag. We'll go to the white hat to see exactly what the call is, and our crew is, has zoomed in on the officials right now as they discuss what it's act exactly going to be. Ball. Personal foul, right team. Mm. So that goes against Viger, actually. And I would like to see what that personal foul might have been. Had to be after the play. It really was after the play on the top of our screen there. Couldn't exactly see the number, but that's where the personal foul came in. Yeah, late block coming in there. And, uh, and in the back, too, Corey. So that probably could have been a situation going on there. And Lee Hunter uh, getting getting unintentional contact with the referee. I saw that. <laughs> as he was making his call. <laughs> he almost made a sack on the referee tonight as well. 
So, Corey, it looks like they gave him some yardage, and now Viger is going to be punting the ball. They declined it. They declined it. Jordan Harris Mitchell fumbles that. That's a live ball, and it is jumped on by Viger and recovered. Corey, right about the 47 yard line. Ruben Lathan on the recovery, a botched, botched return from Jordan Harris Mitchell. We just talked about him getting that first interception last year at the first play of the game. You talk about being special on special teams. That's one of those miscues on the football that the Leopards mm. made, and you just probably want to get away from that football instead of right. trying to pick it up so late in the bouncing of the pigskin and right Johnny on the spot were the Viger Wolves, and that will essentially put them across midfield for the first time this game. Got to thank our folks at Firehouse Subs for feeding the crew tonight, Corey. We're glad to have them on board this season, and they're doing great things. Firehouse Subs, you know they're local. That's why we love them so much. And, Corey, I got to thank you for uh, bringing those boxes tonight, buddy. May Jordan is sacked and brought down as he tried to escape and could not wrapping him up, Kyrie Lewis-Jones. Big defensive end, 6'3", 215-pound junior, just would not let go of Brennan May Jordan as we take a look at the replay. Did a great job of holding his containment. You look at the length and the strength there, able to sling Brennan May Jordan down to the ground and probably comes up with close to a 13 or 14-yard loss. So this is second and long here for the Wolves. They were sitting in Leopard territory and could not a little quick out there. And that is brought down and Corey, that could possibly be the horse collar you were talking about from the previous series. And this 15 yards may be coming back against Blunt. Yeah, I, I love the offensive play calling right now by Eric Scott. You're having a lot of quick throws, getting it out early, just trying to get your quarterback a little confidence in the throwing game. Personal foul, face mask. So not the horse collar, but a face mask. That little quick out to Benjamin Bennett. So that's going to give 15 back to the Viger Wolves. There it is, that good job with the camera work on our crew. And that's a situation to where you automatically eliminate the yards that were lost on the sack brings you right back to the original line of scrimmage and ve or very close to it. So that makes it about second and we'll call it 10 and a half from our vantage point here on top of the press box score. 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Quick out to Sidney Williams and that pass is incomplete. That was not a lateral incomplete pass. You look at that situation, Sidney just tried to run with the football before he caught it. Now, had he caught that football, he would have had a lot of green grass in front of him, got into the open field, but you must look that football all the way in before you start running. You can see co offensive coordinator, about to call him Coach Scott, but Eric Scott, offensive coordinator, they're, they're utilizing Williams a lot tonight, kind of like their little uh, Swiss Army knife, his utility knife for them. They're doing a lot of those screens for him tonight to try to get him open. Sidney Williams again begging for the football. He decides to move over to the slot position. Let's see if he hits him across the middle. They're looking to go deep to Williams. He's wide open and he hauls it in, Corey. That's enough for a first down and much, much more as Viger is close to the red zone ball at the 21 yard line of Blunt. Sidney Williams shows why he's the dynamic playmaker and an impact player for the Wolfpack. He went from the outside receiver positions, moved over to the slot, ran a nice out route, but Brennan May Jordan put the ball on the money. You look at that nice spiral. Underneath it goes Sidney Williams, a great catch, the longest game of the night for the Wolfpack. Little quick screen to Benjamin Bennett. He is wrapped up and brought down for a loss as we approach 30 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Good stop by Cameron Johnson by the Blunt Leopards. And it's a situation as a wide receiver, if you don't hold your block for maybe two seconds, that little quick throw is going to be ineffective. The cornerback was able to shed the blocker and bust that play wide open. About 15 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Play clock down to 20. Viger technically doesn't have to snap this ball. If May Jordan takes his time, the quarter we in, but they snap it, and I believe Coach Lev Holly may have called a timeout for Blunt. Timeout. Timeout. 
So Blunt did call a timeout with 4.2 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Viger looked as if they had something they were about to strike with, and Coach Holly didn't like what he saw, Corey, so he wanted to get his guys together and discuss some things. I like that timeout uh, that was called by the Leopards because it's a situation that you just are able to reorganize the troops. The first call timeout of the contest, you don't want to give up a big play. You just have them now at third down and 11 yards to go. So you're in a situation where it's very important, Al, if you're the Leopards, that you go into the end of the first quarter still leading 6-0. The ball is positioned right there at the 24 yard line of Blunt with 4.2 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And Viger trying to keep this momentum going to try to get on the scoreboard. They're down six points right now. That's a situation here if you're the Wolf Pack. You just don't want to turn the football over. You want to value it. You've moved the football down now to close to the 25-yard line, value it. Hand off to Tanner up the middle. He goes across the 20-yard line into the red zone, and that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter with Blunt on top six to nothing. Al really not surprised here. A lot of penalties in the first quarter, but here we'll see it cleaned up in the second. All right, we'll be back with second quarter action. Don't move. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hello, I'm Renee Phillips, your host of Home Room. Will you join us as we talk with the students, teachers, and staff about all of the great things happening in our schools? That's right, Renee. Not only are we here to keep you informed about the great things happening in our schools, but to also keep you updated on safety issues. Our show, Safe Schools, looks at ways to keep your child and our students safe. Not only are we looking at ways to keep your child and our students safe, but to keep you informed on how to connect with us. Manténgase informado aquí en Conexión a Padres. And we also score big from pre-K to high school with MCPSS Athletics. And then Inside Education puts it all together for you, showing you the ins and outs about news and events taking place across the Mobile County Public School District. We do this to keep you informed. We welcome you back to the campus of Blunt High School for the annual battle of Pritchard, Viger versus Blunt. Viger down six points right now. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corley Bounty. Down on the sideline, we have Kimberly Dunn covering the action. And interesting first quarter we had there, Corey. Yeah, a lot of penalties to begin the game. But again, that's to be expected. I think that'll happen throughout the state of Alabama. I just mentioned at the end of the first quarter, it'll be cleaned up as the game goes along. Right. The coaches will continue to preach discipline and just go ahead and playing within yourself, watching the ball and not jumping off a lot of false starts. Now Viger has to continue to sustain this momentum and put some points on the board. Third and about six here for the Wolves. Trips to the top of the screen. May Jordan rolls out. He's going to keep it. He's going up the middle to get some yards. Maybe close to the first down stick, maybe about a yard short. That'll take Viga to third down. And you look at the Leopards coaching staff looking for a holding call on that particular play. Weren't able to get it, but now you have a tremendous decision to make right here. You know you're probably not going to kick the field goal, but you need that one yard in order to extend the downs. Do you go ahead and go with the power running game, or do you call a timeout to go ahead and decide what kind of play you need to get to establish the first down? So I have to throw the flag on myself. Of course, it's actually fourth down. I wonder if I go take the timeout. They don't. May Jordan keeps it. He gets around the end, out to the numbers, and stretches out to the end zone in the corner. That is a touchdown for Brennan May Jordan. 
Looks like it's about 11 yards as he scampers into the end zone to tie this game up 6-6. Six to six. And what you have to love if you're a Wolfpack fan is the ability to sustain and maintain that offensive drive. You came out, you got some great things going to Sidney Williams. He was able to catch the football. You look how much confidence that gives the quarterback, Brennan May Jordan. I mentioned that he's getting his first start as a sophomore. That's right. But he didn't look like it a sophomore as that drive continued to establish itself. Viger going for the PAT after a Benjamin Bennett lining up to kick it. Bennett gets it up, and it is good. So Viger is on top seven to six after that 11 yard scamper from Brennan May Jordan. We'll be back with more action. Each month, more than 90 guns are reported stolen from unlocked vehicles, creating the potential of serious injury or death. Lock it up. Many violent acts and crimes are committed with stolen guns. Lock it up. According to ATF, stolen guns pose a substantial threat to public safety. Lock it up. Be responsible. Take time to record your handgun serial number and secure it from thieves. Lock it up. Lock it up for me. Welcome back, Viger is on top seven to six with a 11 yard scamper from Brennan May Jordan and the PAT from Benjamin Bennett and Corey, we got ourselves a ball game. Yeah, it's a situation now, Al. Brennan May Jordan, the 5'10", 160 pound sophomore, had never had a start coming into tonight's contest. And with one throw on that drive, the 30 yard plus pass to Sidney Williams, you just saw his confidence level soar. He was able to keep it on the quarterback keeper for that touchdown. Now let's see if the Leopards are able to answer. Bennett ready to tee this one up and kick it away to the Leopards. Little pooch kick over to the side, taken by one of the up guys. And that is Cameron Graves, as a matter of fact, and they're trying to wrap him up and they bring him down. Where would they spot this? So forward progress, maybe about the 31 yard line. And what you see is a lot of momentum on the Viger sidelines, not only by their fans, but the players as well. This is a very young Viger team. Coming up at halftime, we're bringing it back for you, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge, so stick around for that. Kimberly Dunn is gonna try to start our season off with a winner. We'll be featuring that at halftime along with both bands. Gotta feature the bands here at halftime, especially in this game. So Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge coming up at the end of this quarter. First and 10 for Blunt at about the 30, 31 yard line here. Gray's in motion. They do a little counter action and give that to Jarris Williams. And he's got some green grass in front of him, Corey. Knocked out of bounds at about the 40 yard line of Viger. Big run from Jarris Williams. Great job of running the counter by the Blunt Leopards. Nothing on the weak side of containment for the Viger Wolves. And again, you look at Williams, once he gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he has green grass in front of him. And the only thing that stopped him really was the sidelines because if he would have been able to cut back, I know he would have taken it to the house. But that's the type of offensive spot. Uh, spot that, that the Blunt Leopards really needed on this drive. Jarvis Williams ranked number 10 in the state as far as the top 31 players. And they run a lot of offense through him. This play pretty much goes nowhere. Brown was confused as to where he was trying to go as he's talking to the receiver out there like hitting his helmet like, come on, man, maybe someone ran the wrong route there, Corey. But in that situation, he did the correct thing in eating the football, go ahead and put it down and try to take off himself. He really valued the football, didn't have it, towed it out like a loaf of bread. He held it high and tight to his chest to make sure he didn't turn the football over when he was scrambling. Hand off to Williams again, and he hits a wall of wolves and goes nowhere, actually takes a loss about a yard or two, and that'll push Blunt to third down. 
Yeah, we talk about the running of the Wolf Pack for the offense, but that was a, a pack of defensive wolves that were swarming <laughs> on the Leopards in that situation. So it looks like forward momentum gets him back to the original line of scrimmage. So third and 10 here for Blunt as Williams is looking over to the sideline at offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson getting the call. Brown airing it out. And I think we know what that call is gonna be. Sidney Williams was all over the receiver, Corey, so that's gonna be a penalty as he was covering Armani Diamond and he had him covered from head to toe if you catch my drift. Yeah, it's a situation to where you will take that 15 yard pass interference penalty because you don't wanna get beat for the deep ball because the quarterback did a great job, Brown did, of keeping the ball in play, but he was impeded by the defensive back. Pass interference. Right team. So they give Blunt an automatic first down there. As they march this ball up to about the 26 yard line. So it's gonna be first and 10 for the Blunt Leopards. Gotta thank our folks at Future Ones once again, Corey for providing us with our polos this season. Future ones, they are definitely on top of things. They went out with us last season and they're back with us once again. Yeah, proud sponsor of the AHSAA as well. First and 10 for Blunt. Williams with the carry. Had some room to get out there, but he was wrapped up by Devin Caldwell. Big stop by Caldwell because if he gets beyond Caldwell, he's going ahead and going to have six points on the board. Yeah, folks, the future ones right there. Got to thank them for what they're doing for us. Also jumping in on the weather forecast this this season, the future ones forecast. I like the ring of that. Hmm, I think someone I know came up with that one, Corey. <laughs> I like the ring of that. Second down for the Blunt Leopards as they're trying to get into the end zone and get back on the board. It's a keeper for LaMarcus Brown, and boy, he put a jump move right there on, I believe that was Caldwell, Corey, wow. It was Caldwell, just left him standing straight up and down, probably made his knees buckle a little bit because you're trying to wrap up something that now you see me, now you don't, but that just shows the versatility that the quarterback has. We've already seen him scramble for a long touchdown, trying to add six more for the Leopards, but the Leopards are playing with a lot of momentum here with 8-15 here in the second quarter. You talked about it earlier, the guy has offers from FAU, Grambling, and UAB, and he's just a junior, so he has a whole season to mature and keep going. Nice run right there. Leopards inside the red zone and looking to hit pay dirt. It's a keeper for Brown again. Up the middle he goes as he's booing his way, but he cannot get into the end zone. Forward progress will stop him at about the one yard line at the 750 mark of the first half. Yeah, I think this drive started on Blunt's own 30 yard line and they've been able to sustain a nice 70 yard drive here in the second quarter. Like I mentioned on the kickoff by the Viger Wolves, they needed a score right here to answer Viger's score. And that's what this game is all about. You can throw the records out of the window, whether you have juniors, seniors, freshmen, doesn't matter. You put these two teams on the field and they're gonna get after it and give it their best. First and goal here for the Blunt Leopards in the pistol formation. Hand off to Jairus Williams as the crowd chants TD touchdown and he gets it in with a one yard run for Jairus Williams as Blunt takes the lead 12 to seven. Great job by the offensive line up front getting that push. Dorch, Howard, Eaton, Hardy and Deeds made sure that Williams was gonna go ahead and score six and you can look at the line of scrimmage getting the type of push that they really wanted putting six on the board for the Leopards. Well, Coach Holly told us before the game he felt confident in the kicking game, but he's going to go for two right here. After the last PAT was missed, Brown rolling out. Can he get in and stretch it in to get the two? And he does. So Blunt takes the lead 14 to seven after that two point conversion. And we're back with more action from Harris Terry Stadium. You're watching the Battle of Pritchard. 
a teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Sir Quentin Howard, Director Wade Ford. I'm Al Wheaton and Cora Bounty atop the press box at Harris Terry Stadium and the mighty Marching Leopard Band is excited as Blunt has taken the lead 14 to seven, one yard run by Jarris Williams and the two point try is good. So Corey Blunt puts their wheel back on the Viger Wolves and they take the lead here. Yeah, it's a situation where they converted that two point conversion also. That's huge when you start talking about the score at the end of the game, but that's the answer that the offensive needed for the Leopards and now the Wolfpack are gonna have an opportunity. They had all that momentum them off of the offensive score. The defense couldn't step up and be the man to get that stop. Now let's see if the Leopards are able to keep the Wolfpack to three and out. I think this is one of the most pivotal drives here in the first half. Sidney Williams and Tyshawn Jones back to receive this. And actually that one just knocked down Arthur Jackson leveled by one of the Leopards on the return. Yeah, I, I felt that one all the way up here on the press box. Wow. Because you saw helmets flying on that field. Decleated is what we call that. You look at the return, it was kind of a squid kick right up the middle and on the return for the Wolfpack, Arthur Jackson absolutely gets decleated right here by the Blunt Leopards. Looks like Leslie Dewberry says, I will do drop in on that tackle. <laughs> You're right, Corey. That was a deep leader. 6.59 here remaining in the first half. Viger does have great field position. This is their best field position of the night from scrimmage. Ball starting at their own 40-yard line. And you can see that one a mile away, Corey. Two men in motion at the same time, and the ball is fumbled. We're gonna wait from the call from the referee. Join the Mobile County Public School System security team as they take an inside look at school safety and talk to local law enforcement agencies to discuss the safety of your child while at school. That's Safe Schools right here on the MCPSS TV network. Illegal shift on the play by the Wolfpack. Like you said, too many men in motion right. when the ball was snapped. And that, that should be a dead ball foul, correct? And that's what the officials right. now are talking about to decide exactly where the ball is to be placed because we did see a fumble on the play. Correct. But now the officials want to confirm that it is a dead ball foul and that no exchange of possession will take place. Speaking of exchange of possessions, we talk about that new rule at the top of the broadcast, the new 40-second clock rule being instituted. Corey, the pace of play seems just picked up, but we haven't had anything close to a delay of game tonight in this contest. Yeah, I agree with you, Al. It's one of those situations to where now the headlinesman goes ahead and spots the football, 40 seconds immediately starts as soon as that ball is ready for play. Very similar, and it's exactly similar to the college rule that's right. in effect. So you notice the tempo of the game, it goes a little bit faster. You have to get your plays called offensively and defensively off the sidelines, ready to go. Absolutely, so that 40 second clock hasn't really come into effect to hurt either of these teams tonight as you just talked about. Game is going by pretty good. So uh, we shall see what happens at the rest of the contest with the second half about to wrap up at 649. Yeah, it's a dead ball situation to where they're gonna walk the five yards off and it's gonna bring up, I do believe now, first down and 15 yards to go. We play first down. So Viger looks out there with it being a dead ball foul. And you can see Coach Howley and some of the crew trying to lobby for the call, but I, they know the rules, Corey. Yeah, Al, it's a situation, <laughs> you know the though, that you don't want to be behind the sticks and behind the chains if you're the Wolf Pack. You want to go forward and not backwards and sustain a little momentum. Hand off to Michael Towner, and he goes bruising up the middle close to a first down. Let's see where they spot this at. He's going to be close. 
Side judge is walking up to about the say 49 yard line. I think he's gonna be maybe about a yard short. So it'll be second down and one for Viger. The first touch of the night for Michael Towner Jr. The 6'1", 220 pound freshman shows he wants to be the man second and short now for the Wolfpack. No quick out. And that ball pass is incomplete, trying to get it out to Tyshawn Jones, but Corey, he hadn't even turned his head around. Yeah, mix up in communication. Tyshawn Jones was lined up in the slot. Right. Looks like he was trying to block down the field and tell to turn around and catch the football. Just a little missed time. And if he would have turned around, he would have had the catch. The <laughs> interception was available also That's by true. Jordan Reed. He just couldn't get to the football quick enough. Third down and one yard to go now for the Wolfpack with 6-12 remaining here in the second quarter. We did talk about the fact that no raindrops have, have come down since the start of the game, but Corey, I think the humidity has returned, and returning up the middle is Michael Towner for the Wolves, and he picks up enough to get the first down for the Wolfpack. Yeah, it's a situation to where, again, the Wolfpack playing with a lot of momentum coming off of that drive. Now 6.05 left to go here in the second quarter. I'm not quite sure. I think we're going to go to our first heat timeout or I, someone called a timeout. I haven't seen the white hat make the official call. I thought it was a motion that Blunt maybe have called timeout, but they were looking to the sideline, but we're not under six minutes, so maybe we are observing it at this point. Uh, <laughs> we, we've seen things done like this before. Let's go down the sidelines and talk to Kimberly Dunn. She's there with uh, Principal Woods. I'm here with the principal for Blunt High School, Ms. Uh, Principal Woods, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Look at this atmosphere. I know. It's a wonderful atmosphere. Now, we're here right beside the cheerleaders, but something that other um, people may not know is that you are one of the biggest cheerleaders out here tonight. Almost oh, definitely. I'm the number one Leopard fan that there is, definitely. And when I was driving in, I noticed on your sign that it said one of your goals here at the school is to graduate students college and career ready. So how do you do that? Hey, well, listen, that's a big goal for the entire district, graduating all kids, college and or career ready. Here, our, um, our academy is healthcare, so one of the big things, we try to get kids with CNAs, credentials that they can go to work with when they finish high school. But obviously, we've got some high, high achieving academic kids that are gonna go to college, so we wanna get those high ACT scores as well. And when, we, when you do that, when you mix those two together, and you have a high graduation rate, it works out great. So how are you able to keep that school spirit up, not only here on the field with football, but also in the classrooms? It's, it's simple. Listen, it's hard to hide Purple Pride. Blunt High School's been here since 1958. A lot of intense pride in the community. These are two schools, both from Pritchard, one community, two schools, having a good showing tonight for both. Well, I'll let you get back to the game. Thank you so much for taking time with us. Thank you guys for being here at the Battle of Pritchard. Go Leopards. Great interview right there with Coach, I mean, I'm sorry, Principal Woods here at Blunt High School, and May Jordan was headed up the middle court, and immediately he was stopped by the Leopards. I'll tell you what, Leslie Dewberry, number 36 for the Blunt Leopards, has made his appearance known tonight. The inside linebacker, six foot one, 225 pound senior, has made probably three just bone chilling tackles to where he's letting him know, everybody knows he's on the field. So it's second and about 10. May Jordan trying to escape the Leopards, and they are everywhere. He's going into the Leopards' den, and Corey, they're wrapping him up each and every time. Yeah, it's a situation now to where the Leopard defense on this particular drive has been able to penetrate the line of scrimmage and get in the backfield and disrupt the timing of this Viagra Wolves offense. On the last drive that Viagra was able to score on, the offensive line pretty much had their time and gave their quarterback time to make his decision. Now the Leopard defense has stepped it up a notch, 450 remaining here in the second second quarter brings up again a situation where it's third down and 11 yards to go now for the Wolfpack. Sidney Williams lined up in the slot at the bottom of the screen. May Jordan rolling out trying to connect that ball through the hands of Benjamin Bennett. He had it, could not bring it down. So that takes Viger to fourth down. Benjamin Bennett, the 5'10", 180 pound sophomore. Even if he would have caught this football, he would have been short of the sticks. You want him to come down with that football, just went right through his hands. But now it's gonna, it's gonna be an opportunity now for the Wolfpack to try to flip the field a little bit and make the Blunt Leopard drive be a little bit longer instead of being right here at around the 46 yard line. They're gonna try to pin him inside the 30. Armani Diamond back to retrieve this punt. Looks like he's just gonna stay away from it. 
And Biker's going to down this ball close to the 20-yard line as we approach the four-minute mark here in the first half. There is a late flag that came out, Corey, so we'll have to go down to the field and get that uh, clarification. The flag's laying right at around the 46-yard line. So I don't know if that's a run into the kicker or kick interference, so we'll get the clarification. Referee looking over to the sideline of Viger Wolves trying to get the attention of Coach Derek Scott. Everybody's just kind of sitting and waiting on the officials to go ahead and make the decision and the coaching staff to decide whether he wants to accept it or decline it. Coming up shortly, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge is going to take place. Get ready, Kimberly Dunn goes back into the stands as she always does and try to get a winner for the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge coming up very shortly. So, so the call officially was running into the kicker, but not enough to get the first down. So Viger will punt again, but just a bit closer. Diamond setting up at about his own 18-yard line. And the fake is on, Corey. The fake is on. And actually, this ball is fumbled. Little quick snap to David Beck. Viger tried to surprise the Wolves, and it backfired as they were ready for it. And Beck's still down on the ground. He hops up now eventually. So Blunt has great field position at their own 41-yard line. Yeah, I can understand that play call. You only needed six yards to go. The unfortunate situation with that is you give up 25 yards that you would have gained had you punted that ball because the last punt was down right around the 20 yard line so now blunt yeah. instead of taking over at the 20 yard line takes over right at the 41 of their own 41 rather and it looks like coming off the field from that play sydney collins limping off as he's giving some assistance to the blunt sideline little quick out in the slot on the catch there for the, for the Blunt Leopards, try to get a number on there. That's Jairus Williams. Nice game by him. and gets a first down across the midfield strike. Yeah, great catch, a sure-handed catch in that situation. Turn it upfield, move the sticks, and that's the type of throw that I know the Blunt Leopards would love to make as Alonzo Johnson dialed up a wonderful play right there for the Leopards. I think he wants to put the foot on the pedal right here and get a score before the half ends, 348 remaining in the second quarter. And this is a formation we haven't seen in a while from Blunt tonight. Trips at the bottom of the screen, two receivers at the top. So it looks like offensive coordinator Johnson he is trying to air it out. A brief sideline warning given to the Blunt Leopards coaching staff core. Five wide, like you mentioned, the formation, quarterback draw, or go ahead and get in care of the football is what you're able to do. And the flag comes out, one of the Vigo Wolves encroached across the line. Big Phillip Tyson. there. Encroachment, white team. So that'll give Blunt a free five yards, so it'll be first and five for the Leopards. Ball at about the 36 yard line. White team. Still staying five wide are the Leopards. Just noticing that, of course, same formation. Brown looks over to the sideline, takes the snap. A little hitch and wide open to catch that ball for the Blunt Leopards. On the catch, Cameron McKinney. Great pass from LaMarcus Brown. Yeah, he put that ball on the money. And you look at the pump fake. If the defensive back is bites on that pump fake, you're in trouble. There was no help over the top by the safety. Mm. And all Cameron McKinney had to do was look that football in. Now we're in the red zone, getting ready to try to score six more are the Leopards. Great camera action there from my man, Mr. Poe, on the sidelines. Blunt in the red zone looking to score again. They're already on top, 14 to seven. Can they get more points before the half ends? Jarris Brown trying to get to the end zone. He leaps out. Is it enough? And they're going to give it to him. 
touchdown for the Blunt Leopards, about a seven yard run for Jarris Williams. And that's just a great job of the Leopards being able to maintain and sustain a great drive. They took over and punched it in, put six more on the board, extending their lead here with 316 remaining in the second quarter. And you look at Mr. Williams, how tight and high that football is. He knew exactly where the goal line was, stretched out and was able to get six. Our statistician, China Powell, corrects me. Six yard touchdown run for Mr. Williams. His second touchdown in that quarter. And that's big time. That's the type of rushing that you love to establish if you're a Leopard fan. The Viagra Wolves, again, on this drive, Al, you go ahead and you put that behind you. You want to go ahead and be able to maintain a drive looking forward, but a great offensive series by the Leopards. Coach Al is going to try to PAT again. So they are 0 for 2 tonight on the PATs. 20 to 7, Blunt on top, don't move. More action headed your way. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County Public School System, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my action. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge is an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways. To find out what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, from school news to weather alerts, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, mcpssthewire.com. Mobile County Public Schools, learning today, leading tomorrow, and Blunt is leading right now 20 to seven in the Battle of Fritchicore. Yeah, if there's something I know Coach Holly wants to clean up, it's the special teams play. I mentioned it in my keys early. Being able to run your lanes, being able to convert your field goals and extra points are very important. I know it's something that they want to clean up here to start the second half. Tyshawn Jones on the kick. I'm sorry, not Tyshawn Jones. That's for Viger. Emerson Strifeson on the kick now. He handled the kicking duties last year for the Leopards, so LaMarcus Brown gave us two kickoffs tonight, but now they've made the switch. And Byers gonna let that ball go out of bounds. And we know that will be a penalty. And they can take it at with the 25, I believe, Corey. Yeah, it'll be a situation to where if you're the Wolf Pack, you can go ahead and take the free yardage on the kick, advance the football, and be in a great situation with 316 remaining here in the second quarter to go ahead and get some type of offensive momentum. It'll be huge if the Wolfpack can put six points on the board here in the second quarter. Seize the penalty. Looks like they're gonna ask them to I ahead believe they are because the ball went out at about the 22 or 23, so they only would have profited two Seize yards. Penalty. Blue team. So Coach Scott's going to ask him to kick it again. Well, here's the situation. It'll give Emerson Stryverson an opportunity to go ahead and kick that ball a little bit more cleanly and go ahead and put it into play. And I'll tell you what, if Mr. Dewberry comes down this field right here and makes <laughs> another tackle on special teams, I know who is my special team's MVP for sure. Well, last year, Viger finally broke the losing streak. They beat Blunt. 19 to six, it was their first win since 2012. Score last year was 19 to six, and right now, right now we're two points north of that at 20 to seven, Corey. Yeah, you look at the all-time record, Blunt being 13 and 34 versus Viger, trying to get back on the winning side of the tracks. Here's Stryveson again, gets this one up the middle, and it is taken by Tyshawn Jones who gets close to about the 46 yard line. So good move by Coach Scott there to roll the dice and kick it over and he gains uh, some more field position. Looks like they're gonna spot it right about the 45 at the 303 mark in the second quarter. Yeah, the one thing about head coach Derek Scott, he's entering his fifth year at Viger. He has a 37 and 14 record. He is the three time defending region champion in 5A region one. He comes in this preseason ranked number eight in the Alabama Sports Writers Polls. That is huge right there. The 
Sidney Williams at the bottom of the screen, lined up in the slot. May Jordan rolls out and just throws that one away. He was outside of the tackle box. And a hit by Sidney Collins. I guess he came back into the game core, but he's down again. Yeah, he absolutely leveled quarterback Brennan May Jordan as he was trying to unleash that football. And it's a situation to where you hate to see Collins get right back into the game and possibly have another cramp. Worst case scenario, it's something worse. So yeah. I know the training and medical staff is tending to him now, but I know those cramps will definitely make you feel like somebody went ahead and bit you. Those two things at the top of the season, cramps and penalties, we will see a lot of in probably the first two weeks of action. Players kind of went out of the uh, frame of the camera there. So they're going to look at Collins down on the sideline. And speaking of looking, Corey, I was looking at the lovely subs from our folks over at Firehouse Subs. They did a great job tonight feeding the crew for us, score. Yeah, without question, Al. I'd like to thank Jim Sherman and his crew awesome. right there at Firehouse Subs being a wonderful sponsor of our crew. And since, since we're talking about Firehouse, let's stay with the F's future ones as well. They're on board with us again uh, this season taking care of us with the polos and the crew shirts. And, Corey, once again, the crew looking great. And uh, you looking pretty good in your uh, North Carolina blue there, buddy. I love the powder blue, Al. It's a great color to start this season off. And our crew has their shirts on as well. And Future Ones, you want to wear the future official athletic apparel provider of the AHSAA. Look at there, two of the blunt jamming juniors. Lee Hunter right there, number seven, assistant Sidney Collins as he comes off the field. And look at the size of Lee Hunter right there, Corey. Without question, you see the size and the mammoth size of <laughs> Lee Hunter. I oh, yeah. mean, at 6'5", 305, you can see why he's one of the most sought-after defensive linemen, not only here in coastal Alabama, but in the country. Just a physical specimen can really get after it, but you see the brotherhood and the bond of teammates taking care of one another. That's right, showing that camaraderie down on the field. They do have to address there as a flag on the field as well. So that has to be dealt with. In the midst of all of that, that was first down for Viga. I thought that May Jordan had gotten out of the tackle box myself, so I don't think that grounding would be in play, but we'll see what the call is. I don't recall the flag being on the field when I noticed Collins was down. Yeah, I think Collins was right on top of the flag, but nonetheless, it looks like it's a situation to where Blunt is backing up and Viger's moving forward. Second down and 10 is what the sticks are showing. I think we'll get the call right here. So they've already spotted the football. The clock initially had first down. Six five down. Ago. Lost it down. Second down. So Corey, do not listen to me and play your lucky lotto numbers. I was incorrect. It was grounding, so Viger loses it down at second and 10. And pretty soon, we're going to be having some Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge coming up. 2.50 left in the first half. Kimberly Dunn is going to take it into the stands and find us a winner tonight for the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge to get our season started off right. So it looks as if they're now going to mark that penalty off. Loss of down. It'll be second and about 15 for the Viger Wolves. Empty backfield for May Jordan with the quick out to Sidney Williams on the screen. And he gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. So Kimberly Dunn confirms cramping for Sidney Collins on the field down there. And there it is, Corey. The crawl is back. We do have action in other areas of the, of the city and county. So uh, Keep your eyes on the call during out the contest to get some of our scores. Look, tight matchup right there, Daphne and Theodore. Daphne on top, 14 to 13. And I just got a score update. BC Rain is up 13 to zero on the floor at halftime. That's uh, Coach Lawrence Shielding and Chris Raymond. They're playing that game down at Tremere Park, I believe. They are, and it's a situation to where two first-year coaches in the MCPSS as well. Well, actually, a return for Chris Raymond, but yeah, you're right, his first year back here for the school system. Another flag on the play. Dead ball, encroachment, routine, five-yard penalty. 
So that gets the Viger Wolves five yards closer to a first down. They definitely needed that after that grounding penalty. So it's third and five here for the Viger Wolves. 136 remaining and the clock running. Can they get a drive to get some points before the half? Empty set with May Jordan back there by himself. And here's the blitz quick out to Sidney Williams. That's enough to get the first down and stop the clock, more importantly, Corey. Yeah, that's a huge first down by the Wolfpack, but the safe and honest throws being made by Brennan May Jordan to Sidney Williams, Blunt doesn't have anybody in press coverage because they would rather give up the short yardage to Sidney Williams versus the long over-the-top yardage. Looks like we have a timeout called. I believe it's probably going to be a Viger timeout as the referee heading toward the sideline to confirm that at 109 remaining here in the first quarter. So I'm just going to give it to Viger Core. I'll, I'll be generous and give it to him right there. So uh, interesting situation right here. Viger needs to get things going. And speaking of going, Kimberly has it going on the sideline. What's going on, Kimberly? Hey, so we have been very fortunate so far this game to not have very many injuries. The only thing that we have seen is a couple of cramps, and it looks like they're able to work those out pretty quickly by keeping their players hydrated. And the coaches and the staff do a great job of taking care of their players, and that's what's so important during this football season, and especially taking those moments for those heat timeouts to rehydrate and keep their players healthy and safe as they play these football games. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Right now, 109 remaining in the second quarter after that timeout. It is first down and 10 for the Viga Wolves ball at the 44 yard line. And what Viger does not want to do right here is turn the football over. If you're young quarterback, Brennan May Jordan, you just want to value the football. Don't go ahead and get in a situation to where you turn the ball over and give it to the Leopards and kill any type of momentum that you have going into the half. We've yet to see uh, May Jordan really air one out as of yet. Gets that ball to Towner, and that's a live ball, Corey. Or oh, no, it is not. It is not. He is ruled down. Of course, the Blunt faithful are on their feet thinking that Jamal Booker took it to the house, but Tanner was down by contact. Yeah, it's a situation to where they killed it early at the line of scrimmage. 56.8 seconds remaining, and I don't know if we're in a situation to where Lev Holly, he is not happy no, he's not. with the call I'd love to see the replay on this one. Yeah, it's a situation to where I think that it was a catch and a fumble. So you look at the throw, the drop back throw, exactly by Brennan May Jordan. The reception as the knee touchdown, and that is a fumble. Corey, that looks like that ball is out now. And that would have been a scoop and score. He I, do not, I do not believe Blunt has the instant replay equipment here on campus to challenge that call. And I know Coach Lev Holly, he's going to call a timeout to go ahead and just talk to the officials to see what they saw in that situation. So I, I really like the timeout by Lev Holly to calm down his team in that yeah. situation. 55 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. That could have been a huge momentum swing. When could you look at the replay, it was a great play, great throw by Brennan May Jordan, but an even better tackle and strip by the blunt defense, and it should have been a scoop and score. You look at his knee, great camera work. The ball is out ball prior is out. to the knee hitting, and it was a great tackle. Jalen Parnell punches it out for him, Corey. And it was a scoop and score situation to where Blunt was going to put on the board, six on the board. They did not have an opportunity. It was taken away, but that's just one of the things. The officials, this is their first game, too. It happens yes, bang, bang. And in that situation, the official just did not have a great angle at it, one that I know Coach Lev Holly would love to be able to throw that red challenge flag oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. to go ahead and have the officials to take a look at the replay. We have the benefit of replay right here, but it clearly was a fumble. And let's talk about that. Last year, the Alabama High School Athletic Association instituted instant replay, uh, but it was at the discretion of the home team. So you have to have the equipment for a challenge to take place. And I believe last year in our second game of the season, Baker was hosting Theodore and former coach Danny Smith. He called, he threw the red flag. They didn't get the call, but that was our first time seeing instant replay used in a game last year. But it's important for Viger here with that fumble being overturned and not called for Viger not to turn the ball over again, trying to go for the gusto here with 55 seconds left. And Towner comes in as the backup quarterback. He's a freshman and he is brought down and wrapped up 
for a loss, sacked for a big loss, and that's going to, I believe, Coach Holly is going to use his last time out. Stephen Bell on the tackle for the Blunt Leopards, and that's just a big play right there as we're getting ready to end the second quarter. Blunt's trying to erase any type of momentum and gain their own defensive momentum going into the half. Yeah, things have kind of gotten sloppy here in the latter part of the second quarter. A lot of penalties going in, a lot of uh, missed coverages and situations, and uh, we can't say exactly a blown call by the officials right there, Corey. You said this is their first game, too. Their first time getting live action as well, but we have the benefit of the replay cameras. Without they don't. Without question, without question. And that's why I like the fact that the AHSA has made it available for those teams who want to go ahead and implement that system. Right. And that just goes to show with the benefit of replay, even though it may take a little longer that you can get the correct call on the field. Yeah, the key is to get the correct call as possible. Unfortunately, we don't have the instant replay uh, equipment here at Blunt High School, uh, but we get to see it all the time. But uh, that was a nice punch out by Parnell there. Yeah, it was bang, bang play, Al. And you look at the strategy now that Lev Holly is using. He would like to put six more points on the board. 45.4 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. He would like to get this defensive stop and go ahead and put his offense down on the field and allow his offensive coordinator, Alonzo Johnson, to dial up one more kill play for the Leopards. It is 45.4 seconds remaining here in the contest. And it is second, and I'm going, I'm sorry, third, and I'm going to call it a country mile for the Viger Wolves as Towner just airs it out trying to connect with Sidney Williams, but he's got a nice arm there, Corey. He's a freshman, but he throws it out of bounds, so it's fourth down for the Viger Wolves. You, you see the versatility of Michael Towner Jr. He's listed at six foot one. We know he's a 220 pound freshman. We saw him run the football earlier, and now for the last couple of possessions, we've seen him throw the football as well. So it's one of those young dynamic players in my checklist earlier, I said, who's the man? Well, he may be the future of Viger football. He could be, and I don't believe May Jordan was hurt or anything. I just think they wanted a different look because he just left the field. He was in a different position. Well, pump by Williams right there gets up to about the 37-yard line. So we have less than 30 seconds remaining in the first half. And we have another flag on the play, Cora. Yeah, the flag's right at the 46-yard line. And that's a situation now, if it's going to be called against Blunt, then it will give Viger an opportunity to pin the Leopards even further and make them drive even further here to try to put six more points on the board. If it's against the Wolfpack, you probably want to decline it take the ball where you are and give your offensive team a couple of chances to put six more points on the board. Here's a replay right here on the punt. Could have been running into the kicker. I don't think it was, Cor, but if it is, that's a great Oscar performance by Thaddeus Williams. And I love how the officials get together and confirm with one another to make sure that they're getting it correct themselves on the field and right. trusting one another. It's so important to have a great partner that you listen to. Play Participating. Oh, that's a legal participation. So that's, uh, looks like 12 men on the field there. Not enough to get the first down. But as you said, if it's in Viger's favor as it is, it'll get them a bit closer to punt this and possibly pin Blunt closer to their own end zone. Yeah, we saw Viger early to go for the fake when it was fourth down and probably six yards to go right around this same area. But now well, the Leopards have Diamond deep. Let's see if he can get off a big return here and try to get some momentum and make the field even shorter, shrink the field for the Leopards going into the half. Looks like it's about fourth and eight, so Williams is going to punt it. Not a very good punt and doesn't get the roll and immediately grabbed. At about the 22-yard line, it appears as if we're, they're going to spot this. So 21.2 seconds remain before we head toward the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. And, Corey, speaking of trivia and halftime, it wouldn't be halftime without the Battle of the Bands. So make sure you stick around for that at halftime. You're getting a live look right there behind the scenes here at Harris Terry Stadium. Unity in the community, the Battle of Pritchard. Two great programs. We talked about it off the top. They have the respect of everyone. When you see these two teams on your schedule, 
you got to respect them, Cora, when they kid it your way. Yeah, it's a situation to where I think the Leopards can take a couple deep shots vertically. Well, they may just hand it off to Mr. Williams right there with less than 20 seconds remaining, and that probably should be our last play of the first half. And they are going to take it to the half. So that's going to take us to halftime, blown on top 20 to 7. And Kimberly Dunn is going to try to catch up with, I'm sure, Blunt head coach Lev Holly. Interesting uh, quarter there, Corey, that second quarter. Yeah, you had a lot of explosive plays. It's a situation that Viagra wanted to limit those explosive plays by the Leopards. But you look at the penalties in the first quarter to be yeah. expected by both teams. Both teams having an opportunity to go in at halftime, regroup themselves. I know special teams will be a point of emphasis for both teams. And I think it's a situation, Al, to where now you look at the second half, right. score will be 0-0. Zero to zero. That's what both coaches will be preaching. Yeah, right now, blown on top 20-7. to seven, And uh, we're waiting for Kimberly to get set up with Coach Lev Holly down on the sideline. So she'll talk with him about maybe what some of his thoughts were. So let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kim. Coach Holly, how do you feel about your team's performance so far tonight, and what are some things that y'all need to improve on? Uh, one, we got to clean up on the mistakes. I mean, it's too many misalignments, and the thing that they're getting is nothing that they're doing. It's all on us, so just got to go in and get some alignment stuff straight. But I love the effort. I love the effort. Uh, got to be sound on some more stuff, special team buzz. But I'll take full responsibility for it, and we'll be better coming out. So what are you going to say to your team to motivate them for this next half? I don't think you got to be motivated. They just got to keep fighting. I mean, you're in a dog fight. That team is not going to give up. So we just got to go in and just keep punching away, punching away. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Kimberly. That's something I asked Coach Ali before the game. Next to a win, what do you want to see? And he said, I want to see the effort out of these kids tonight, Al. Yeah, the improvement quarter by quarter is what I know he wants to see. He's going to have an opportunity to regroup the troops. You're going to reset the scoreboard as, as a coach. You right. tell you, we got to play like it's zero to zero. And if we eliminate those middle mistakes, if you're a Leopard fan, you'll be able to put another 20 points on the board. If you're a Wolfpack fan, you had a couple of offensive drives to where your young quarterback got some momentum, you're going to tell him to right. calm down and continue to gain that momentum. All right, Blunt's on top, 20 to seven. Headed your way, halftime action and the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Don't move, those bands are headed your way. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Get it. to celebrate because you're also funding local job training and placement programs in tech, healthcare, and more. Goodwill. Bring good home. Let's take it down to the field and check out the marching Viger Wolves.
was the dynamic sounds of the Viagra Marching Wolves. We'll be back with more halftime action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Bailey Buck. I attend MGM High School. Here I'm pursuing my career in the dental industry. I'm currently enrolled in honors classes that will help prepare me for my future. My name is Bailey Buck. I'm preparing for tomorrow, today. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate our students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. Welcome back to the Battle of Pritchett. It is halftime, so you know what that means. Bands are on the field. We'll get back to them, but also headed your way, we've got the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. But now more action on the field for halftime. Hey, Kimberly, ready for the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. All right, we are here with our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge, and I have some very special guests with me. This is Grace and Jacob and Marcus and Eli. Are y'all having fun tonight? Yeah! Y'all having fun? Yeah. yeah! I think we may have some future TV stars because they keep wanting to take the microphone away from me. Do y'all want to be on TV one day? Yeah. yeah. Do y'all want to be on TV one day? Yeah. All right. I want to be a third character. Oh, wow. Are you ready to answer the question? Okay, our question this evening is, what state borders Alabama, which is where we live, to the north, okay? Is it A, Mississippi, B, Tennessee, C, 
C, Georgia, or D, Ohio? What do y'all think? Ohio. Ohio, C. B, oh, I heard a B. What do you think? Ohio, Ohio. what do you think? <laughs> Mississippi? Okay, it's not Ohio, and it's not Mississippi. So what does that mean? B. B, it's Tennessee. No. So you got it right. Woo! It's okay. Y'all get to share our wonderful prize pack. Are y'all ready to see what's in here? This is from Chick-fil-A. Oh, look at all the goodies. Oh, a cup. What else is in there? Oh, more cups. And look. Oh! We got some Chick-fil-A gift cards. Y'all going to go to Chick-fil-A? Yeah! All right. Well, y'all have fun watching the game. Y'all wave everybody and say bye. Bye! Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Let's take it down to the field and take in the sounds of the mighty marching leopard band.
the dynamic sounds of the home team tonight, your mighty marching blunt leopards as they come off the field. We'll be back with first half stats and second half adjustments for the Battle of Pritchard. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goal. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate our students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. We are back. We are back live here at Harris Terry Stadium on the campus of Blunt High School. As you're aware, Mobile County Public Schools and Biger High School are saddened by the loss of Patrick Crawford, who was an outstanding student a great football player and a volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club. He was a senior at Viger, and right now they're doing a uh, memorial and an honor to him, so we'll take it down to the field. Their school board commissioner, Dr. Reginald Crenshaw, right now, as he is communicating to the audience. And we also have a check based on what you all gave us in the stands. We have a check for you to help set the Presenting a check to the family of the late Patrick Crawford to his parents, Shannon Stewart and Patrick Crawford. Patrick Crawford was a member of the Viger High School football team. Hi, I'm Todd. And I'm Terry, and we'd like to invite you to join us as we take a look at nature in ways that you've never seen before. Come travel with us as we go coast to coast to uncover some of the most interesting animals. And some of the most beautiful scenery that's offered outdoors. You can join us on our nature adventures right here on the MCPSS TV network. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Corey, a great memorial right there being presented to the family of the late Patrick Crawford by the Blunt Leopards here. Yeah, you look at the emotional toll, and we talked briefly about it at the beginning of our bad broadcast. You know, close to a week ago, Patrick lost his life tragically right. in a motor vehicle accident, and you, you, he was going to be the starting defensive end, and that's just a situation to where when you're looking at being the starting defensive end and having to reshuffle your entire lineup, not only that, Correct. but just they don't give you a playbook like that as far as a head coach and it just it's a situation to where our hearts go out to the family absolutely right so great job by there by the blunt leopard family to honor them as well we're going to take a look at some first half statistics tonight uh first and second quarter interesting ball game we've had so far tonight core we had a lot of penalties come into play but also situations where uh we had a score that didn't happen based on a uh, some instant replay, but take a look at some of the stats tonight. Yeah, you look at the rushing yards. It was going to be very important at the beginning of the contest for the Viagra Wolves to run with the Wolf Pack, and they've been able to have 69 rushing yards. I thought that that was going to be the key to Viagra having themselves a chance to win this game. Blunt, on the other hand, has 108 rushing yards. You look at the passing yards, close to even, only a 10-yard difference, yeah. but the quarterbacks have really been the difference in this game, along with the Blunt offensive player, Jarris Williams, who runs tremendously hard, accounting for a lot of those 108 yards. The one turnover by Blunt really didn't make a difference in the game, but you see 
Uncle Mo, um, Uncle Mo show his face for the Viger Wolves. And the Viger Wolves are playing off of that emotion that Patrick Crawford's death has given them. And right. they want to play for him. So you know at the beginning of the game, whatever Coach Scott said to his team, they were going to play in honor of Patrick Crawford Jr. And it's a situation, you look at the score, 20 to seven. Viger's a very young team. Who's the man? Now you're going to see who wants to step up in the second half for the Viger Wolf Pack and take over for this team. Yeah, one thing doesn't surprise me there, the amount of penalties, seven against Viger, four against Blunt. You know, it's the first game of the season, first live action for a lot of these kids. They've been doing some seven-on-seven seven games, and then they've been playing against each other for a couple weeks. You know, school started just a few weeks ago, Mobile County Public School System. So this is their first live action. So not surprised by those penalties. I'm pretty sure they will cut down. Corey, tell me this. Second half adjustments. What would you say Viger needs to do to make a second half adjustment right now? If you're the Wolf Pack, you want to go ahead and be able to sustain long drives. And you were able to have a couple of big time throws by your quarterback, Brendan May Jordan, to Sidney Williams. But you want to continue to find Sidney Williams. Find ways to find your best player on the field, right. getting him the football, whether it's reverses, whether it's quick bubble screens, whether it's quick crosses, or, or whatever the situation is, just put the ball in his hand. All right, cool. Let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly Dunn has Coach Derek Scott right now. What did you say to your team to motivate them for the second half to make those adjustments like you were saying? Well, we just, we're, we're, we're right there. We're one or two plays from being right there where we want to be. Uh, it's 20 to seven, uh, which is only 13 points, which is, which is less, than four, less than two touchdowns. So we just got to get got to get back focused, got to get a stop here on the coming out at the half and go score the ball. That's what we talked about, just getting a stop and go score the football. All right, thank you so much, Coach. I'll let you get back to your team. Thank you, much. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Derek Scott walks right up as you were talking about the second half adjustment for the Viger Wolves, Corey. Now, for Blunt, what do you think Coach Holland needs to do? Even though he's in the lead, I'm pretty sure he's got to make some kind of adjustments in the second half. Yeah, he wants to eliminate penalties. He wants to go ahead. If he has an opportunity to put this Viger Wolves team away, he wants his team to do so and have that killer mentality uh, as a football program. You know, you look at his coaching staff, the stability has been there on both of these staffs. Right. It, it leans a little bit more for the Wolfpack because when you look across those sidelines, you have Tobias Gill, who's a Viagra alum, Jamichael Winston, who coaches the defensive line, he's a Viagra alum, Fletcher Robinson, Ellis Langster, Lee Johnson. These guys, um, most of them graduated from Viagra, so they know what this rivalry means. Right. They've been in this situation. They've been in this game before, so I guarantee they're being coached up on the sidelines by guys who know the intensity and what it takes to win this football game for the Wolfpack. On the other hand, like you said, Lev Holly is just telling his guys, let's stay disciplined. Let's build that brick-by-brick -brick mentality here in the second half. All right, Viagra is going to be kicking off. Blunt will be receiving this second half kickoff as we are just seconds away from resuming the Battle of Pritchard. Benjamin Bennett lining it up. Jordan Harris Mitchell looks like he's deep. Along with uh, Armani Diamond as well. Bennett kind of shanks that one, and it immediately hits one of the Blunt Leopards right at the 45-yard line. So Blunt's going to have some great field position right here at the 45. Carl coming in right here. Some of the scores being updated. Baldwin County on top of Murphy, 7-6. to six. That game being played over at Ladd Stadium. Citronelle all over Washington County, 30 to seven. And there's Theodore on top of Daphne now, 20 to 14. First and 10 for the Leopards, both their own 45 yard line in the pistol formation. Williams rolls out and they toss it to him on a little lateral. He picks up a couple, maybe up to the, about the 49 yard line. Big play 
starting the second half for the Leopards with a completion, and that's what you want to do. You want to complete the football, keep the clock running, but Jairus Williams doing a wonderful job showing the versatility that he has. As the call comes in, you notice Williamson out up there. They played a jamboree game last night, so they got their first action out of the way. Also, Baker had a jamboree game last night as well. So those two teams will start their official season next week with their first action. Little screen of Cameron Graves. They set it up well for him. He gets enough for the first down, but then he is stopped by a few of those stifling Viger Wolves. It's a situation, again, if you're the Leopards, you want to make sure you take care of the football. Don't put the pigskin on the turf. And if you're able to do that, those type of passes are getting very effective for Alonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Leopards. And I mentioned how Blunt breaks it down. They're in what Coach Holly calls now the blue zone, and they're trying to get to that red zone area inside the 20. First and 10 for the Blunt Leopards into Viga Wolves territory. And I believe that is a jump off size for Viger, so Blunt is going to benefit from a free five yards right here. Yeah, encroachment penalty will cost you five yards. We've seen that hard count a couple of times by both quarterbacks. You just have to stay disciplined. Encroachment right there. So they have the free five being marked off for the Leopards. So ball sitting at about the 37 yard line of Viger. Blunt still in that pistol formation. Double receivers at the bottom and the top. Hand off to Jairus Williams up the middle. He goes. Great blocking by the Blunt Leopards. He should have enough to get the first down and move the stick score. Yeah, it's a situation to where the Leopards are just pushing forward, trying to get that offensive line dominant uh -huh. and get that type of push here in the second half. But if the Leopards are able to establish any type of running game against this Wolf Pack, it will continue to grind the clock out and keep this Wolf Pack defensive line on the field. And you'll start to see holes open up here as the third and fourth quarter progress. It is first down for Blunt. Ball at about the 30-yard line. Gray's in motion. They hand it off to him on the jet sweep. He comes around the edge, trips up, but we do have a late flag coming in after that play. Yeah, never really gained his balance no. on the little jet sweep. And you look at Cameron Gray's to go along with the penalty. It's a situation to where it's going to be called against Blunt. And as we wait for the call, Corey, we hear the old classic voice of Santee Gamble talking about that dirty yellow rag. Yeah, that's his favorite <laughs> call. And again, that's just classic. I've been coming to these games <laughs> since I was a youngin, and you love to hear his voice over the PA, whether it was at Pritchard Stadium or here. So the hole goes against the Leopards, and that'll push them back. Blue team. So it'll be second along. See if we can catch the hold on the replay right there. Probably right there in the middle on the center. But Gray's never got his footing and couldn't get his momentum going. So second and long for the Blunt, I'm sorry, first and long for the Blunt Leopards. Gray lined up here on the near side, goes into motion. Little counteraction, they ran this play earlier with great results and it's great results again. Jarris Williams up to about the 30, I'm sorry, about the 26 yard line court, but we did have a down player. That's LaMarcus Brown took a hit there on that handoff. Yeah, and that's a situation to where if you're a Leopard coach or a fan, you're holding your breath because all he did was hand the ball off and it took a lick from the weak side and I don't know if it was directly on the knee or where the lick was taken but it is the starting quarterback LaMarcus Brown after he handed the ball off or simultaneously handing the ball off yep. taking that hit. Looked like he took a helmet probably right to the chest right there maybe knocked the wind out of him and the Leopards they come by and take a knee backup quarterback is Cameron McKinney he started playing football at the age of five says his game reminds most people of Jerry Rice so we'll see if uh, McKinney's going to come in. 
And Corey, let's take a look at your checklist again as they put the spotlight on us here atop the uh, press box at Harris Terry Stadium. Yeah, you're looking at Viagra. You wanted to limit the Leopards' explosive plays. A run play was over the 10 yards, but Blunt wanted to make that start fast and finish strong mentality. We saw them go ahead and get that first score of the game and finish the second quarter very strong. They wanted to make Viagra dial up long down in distance situations. They've been able to do that. And the solid special teams, we haven't really been able to see that yet by the Blunt Leopards because they've had a couple of special right. teams miscues right. on extra points. On the flip side of that, you're looking at the Wolf Pack. They definitely wanted to limit the Leopards' explosive plays. They haven't really been able to do that yet. The successful running Wolf Pack, we saw them able to score that touchdown in the first quarter, getting that push and playing with some momentum. And who has been the next big name for the Viga Wolves? Well, so far, you're looking at your quarterback situation. Brennan May, Jordan, and Michael Towner Jr. Right. are trying to take over for the Wolf Pack. So Brown comes out on his own strength, kind of tugging at the middle of his jersey there. Cameron McKinney, the senior, on the field. But no, he is not in the backup role right now. Looks like Jarris Williams is going to take over. So, cool, we may get some direct snaps here as Williams is lining up, takes the snap, and he hands it off. Cutting around the edge, Kel Smith. Picks up a couple of yards on the play. Noticed him on my Facebook page say they're going to bring it tonight, Corey, when I made a post about the game. <laughs> and it's a situation to where he brought it on that run, was oh, able yeah. to get outside of the containment of the Wolfpack defensive line. And you see the speed and the elusiveness that he has. But the difference now with the cadence and being able to hold on to this football, Blunt has to be and make sure they don't turn the football over as they are in the red zone area. Smith is a sophomore. Direct snap to Williams. He keeps it. He's going up the middle, and he hits pay dirt. I believe that's a touchdown, about a 17-yard touchdown for Jarris Williams. Corey, he is showing out tonight. No need to turn the football over. He's just going to turn the scoreboard over and increase the points for the Blunt Leopards. A nice design quarterback draw, and he's able to take it to the house for the Blunt Leopards. You take, take a, a look, look at, at that replay, replay, yeah. Right, I mean, it's just a direct snap as you have your starting quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, out. What better way than to give it to your running back? I said earlier, if this guy gets past the line of scrimmage, you can go ahead and put six on the board, and he showed you why. So we haven't seen this formation from Blunt on the MCPSS TV network in about two years. They ran it a couple years ago against Viger just like this, and they got the two points, and tonight it fails. A little special teams again. Your two-point conversions and your extra points no good so far for the Blunt Leopards. One on top, 26 to seven. We'll be back with more action with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hello, my name is Abby Dinkins. My children go to ER Dixon Elementary School. The education that uh, my kids are getting, um, they are. It's, it's tremendous. There's one time that I thought about homeschooling my kids because I wasn't sure, you know, we're new here. And when I enroll my children at the public school and I'm just blown away because the teachers are nice, the, the curriculum itself is different. I believe in Mobile County public school education um, for preparing my children for life. Welcome back to the Battle of Pritchard. Al Whedon joined by Corey LeBounty down on the sidelines. It's Kimberly Dunn, and Corey, that was a 16-yard run by Jarris Williams to hit pay dirt and put Blunt on top, 26-7. to seven. Yeah, a nice 67-yard drive, I do believe. Took off a little time off the clock now. 9.39 remaining here in the third quarter. Now Viger cannot afford to go three and out on offense because that defense was on the field for so long on this last drive. Viger just needs to gain some type of momentum here offensively and be able to move the sticks. And speaking of defense, this is something very uncharacteristic for Viger, Corey. Last year, they only gave up nine points a contest on an average through the whole season. Right now, giving up 26. So this is a very uncharacteristic, but think about it, they lost. 10 starters off that defense from last year. You talk about uncharacteristic. It's not like Blunt not to make the playoffs. They were 5-5 five five a yeah. season ago, averaged 20.6 
points per game. But anytime you lose 10 out of 11 starters on the defensive side of the ball, things are going to be a little bit different. And that's exactly what has occurred for the Wolfpack. Nothing to hold your heads down about because you're still in this contest with 931 here in the third quarter. You just need your offense to give you that little boost of energy to keep your defense off the field. And speaking of a booster energy, right now, Mr. Everything, Sidney Williams is in at quarterback as he hands the ball off to Tyshawn Jones, and a late, late flag comes in, Corey, after the play. Yeah, it's one of those flags where you don't like to see that type of flag come in that late in the play. So this is our third quarterback tonight for Figer. We had Brendan May Jordan. Then for a couple plays, Towner came in, and right there, Williams in the backfield taking a snap. First and five. Routine. 15 yards down. So that goes against Blunt. Some of those mental miscues Coach Holly talked about going into the locker room. Yeah, it's the situation where if you're Viger, you're extremely pleased. You'll take those free 15 all evening long, marching it off beyond midfield now. They're going to spot the ball right at the Leopard 49-yard line. And Viger can capitalize off of this. You have this one play that you get free 15 yards. You turn it into another huge offensive play. Turn it over to Sidney Williams. You have your best playmaker now touching the football very often. Best guy on the field, best player on the field. He should probably be touching the ball every time, as you just said. So they're lining up once again with Williams taking this snap. Going to keep it and go around the top edge. Picks up maybe two or three as he's tripped up by a few of the Leopards players. And that will take Viger to second down and then pass the midfield strike. And the great thing about that play, though, is they gain positive yards on first down. You're controlling down and distance when you get those type of positive yards. Even though it's two or three yards a pop, now you're looking at probably second down and seven yards to go for the Wolfpack. We have an injured Blunt Leopard down on the field right now. Possibly some of those cramps, Corey. That's Jamar Booker laying down. 8.44 remaining here in the third quarter. And just before that previous play, you could see one of the wide shots from one of the cameramen down on the field. Maybe some someone thought the fog is settling here. Actually, it's some of that uh, smoke from that charcoal burning out, Corey. That's, that's good. Well, when you're tailgating. Finally <laughs> subsiding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great tailgating action in the end zone right. here at Harris Terry Stadium. You know, you, you come at 9 a.m. and you start to bring in the RVs, you bring out the grills, and you just love the aroma of that smoke. It does look like fog it as does. it hits the field, but being a warm and humid night, I'm surprised we haven't seen more guys cramp up than we have, but yeah. that's just a sign of the conditioning programs that both of these teams have that you have not seen an extended amount of guys cramping. Second down at about six for the Viga Wolves, empty set. Sidney Williams back there all by himself with a man in motion. They fake the jet sweep and he keeps it. Showing that senior leadership, and you talked about getting that positive yardage, Corey. He picks up maybe two or three, and again, another flag comes in late. It's going to be one of those dead ball personal fouls. Yeah. And it's just a situation where you have to be disciplined. And if you're Viger, you go from now probably possibly third and short. If you got caught pushing the face mask of a blunt leopard, that will cost your team close to 15 yards. We'll see exactly what the call is. So it is a personal foul against Viger immediately when the flag was thrown. I could see offensive coordinator for Blunt, Alonzo Johnson, just clapping like, oh, yeah, we're going to get 15 yards back right here. Yeah, you, you didn't want to give up the 15 yards to begin with, but now you're putting Viger's offense into reverse. It's just one of those disciplined penalties. You got positive yards off of the quarterback keeper. You don't want to do anything that hurts your team. That's one of those plays that, when you look at it on film, you're like, guys, we have to grow up quickly and we can't afford to be selfish and cost our team 15 yards. So second and long here for the Wolfpack. And back into the ball game is Brennan May Jordan. Correction on that, Benjamin Bennett lining up to take the quarterback snap 
and a timeout immediately called by Viger, Corey. So it makes you wonder, are there some things going on on the Viger sideline at media days? Coach Scott talked about one thing he learned from that loss in the state championship game is to trust your first mind. But now I'm kind of thinking, what is going on? Some, maybe some, some questionable decisions being made right here moving players all around. Yeah, it's a situation to where you want to be confident with what your team is getting ready to come up with. And you want to tell your team to calm down in this situation. They have to calm down as they just lost 15 yards on an unsportsmanlike situation. So Viger just regrouping here on the sidelines. We got a break right here. Let's take a look at the uh, Alabama Sports Writers Association preseason top 10 polls. And right there, no surprise, with UMS Wright on top, two-time defending champion, backed up right there by Hillcrest Evergreen and Andalusia. And Corey, that is three teams from uh, Region 4. I mean, Class 4, Region 1, right here in our area. So uh, definitely a tough division right there. And UMS Wright trying to duplicate something blunt has only done in this area, winning three championships back to back to back. So Brennan May Jordan does come back in, hands the ball off, possibly with a fumble, but it, Viger jumps back on top of it. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn for an injury update. We just checked in with the quarterback for the Blunt Leopards, and it appears that all that he had was a cramp, which is something that we're seeing a lot of in this game. When we were about to start the second half of the game, I saw both teams trying to stretch as much as they could so that they could avoid those cramps. So hopefully we won't see any more of those throughout the game. Kimball, we appreciate that. No surprise with the cramping going on tonight, Corey. Thaddeus Williams back to punt for Viger. We've called his name a few times tonight. And that one goes straight up and straight back down. But it does get a Viger Wolves bounce a little bit there, so it helps them out a bit, Corey. Yeah, that ball goes end over end. It takes a nice little roll at the <laughs> end of the kick. Let's take a look at the uh, Class 5A preseason poll coming in right there. Viger, we have them on live, and they made it to the championship game last year. A lot of people called it the year of the Wolf. Went 13-2, and only lost to Opelika and that championship game where they lost to Central Clay County heartbreaker. So Viger still makes the top 10. No surprise right there with them being ranked number eight, Corey. Yeah, I mean, you look at based on what they did one year ago, and again, replacing 10 out of 11 starters on one side of the ball, losing 21 out of 22. I've never heard of anything like that. And as I've talked to many coaches, this is perplexing them as well. <laughs> So LaMarcus Brown back into the ball game and gets a little quick hitch out to the receiver, Jalen Parnell. While we got a break between plays, we'll look at the 6A top 10 poll. Sarah Land ranked number two starting off strong. They went to the championship game last year. Spanish Ford at number eight and Blunt right there at number nine coming off a five and five record. Look, the, look at the respect the Blunt Leopards are receiving and St. Paul's went seven and four, made the playoffs last year. Their first season in 6A court, they impressed a lot of folks last year, but look at Blunt ranked number nine. Yeah, Blunt's gonna make a lot of noise as they have a loaded 2021 class with Mr. Williams headlining it, him and Lee Hunter both. You're right about that, they can't wrap him up. And he is on the run, on the prowl, trying to get to the end zone and taken down at about the 11 or 12 yard line. Big run from Jairus Williams. He is doing a lot tonight. Let's check him out on the replay. Look at yards after contact. A very shifty move, shifts in the hole and makes Viger two, three defenders miss. Is able to finish the wrong run strong. It's one of those situations on Corey's checklist that I had. Viger wanted to start fast and finish strong. Uh, excuse me, Blunt that is that is a strong finish and a nice run one of the longest of the evening Very nice by the leopards blunt in the red zone and looking to get back on the board again up 26 to 7 right now over viger and they're going to give it back to the workhorse jaris williams and he gets a couple All right, there we are, Corey. Had a brief little audio situation going on. So it looks like we have our heat timeout 
exactly at the six minute mark, Corey. So we had a little technical timeout. So uh, maybe uh, the ref knew we needed a break as well. No question about <laughs> it, Al. 26 to seven here in the third quarter at Harris Terrace Stadium here in Pritchard, Alabama. And you're looking at the Leopards leading the Wolf Pack and six minutes left to go is plenty of time for the Wolf Pack to find some type of defensive stop and answer. But if the Leopards are able to put six on the board right here, it'd right. be critical. While we have a break, let's take a look at the last poll, 7A. And at the top, Central Phoenix City, right there, sitting in number three in our area, McGill Tulin, ranked number three in the preseason. And coming in number eight, Theodore. They won the region last year. Big game as they beat McGill Tulin at home and pretty much sealed the deal for the region title. And right there, Fairhope getting some respect. So three Gulf Coast teams in the top 10 at 7A. Corey and probably next to 6A region one, one of the most uh, competitive regions in the area right here, 7A region one. And I like the fact that we have great competition and a new region winner one year ago in the Theodore Bobcats. That's right. Taking McGill Tulin off of that throw. We have to find a way for a 7A Region 1 team beyond Miguel Tulin to get that first round playoff win also. Right about that. So play is about to resume right now. First, second down. Second down for the Blunt Leopards. Handing off to Jarris Williams as he is slashing and picks up a couple yards. All right, our first game of the week, brain buster of the season. Corey, we're going to get it up here for you and see if uh, you've been studying over the summer. Let's see what we have. Viger and Blunt have combined to produce three Mr. Footballs in the state. Can you name them? You know, that's a big honor to be named Mr. Football. And between these two schools, they have combined to have three. So we'll, we'll give you that answer a little bit later on. Think about that, your game of the week, Brain Buster. Third down for Blunt and Brown on the roll, rolling out. And does he get the connection? It is a touchdown for the Blunt Leopard on the score. right here. The extra points haven't been their friend tonight, but I believe they've called a timeout, maybe an incorrect formation of some sort, Court. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a flag on the play there. No wonder Alonzo Johnson was upset. Yeah, it's a situation to where after a score, Blunt definitely knows what they want to work on next week. They're at Robertsdale one week from tonight, so it's a situation to where they want to go ahead and clean up the special team situation. You know, legal formation right there called against the Leopards, so that's going to push them back. They're still going for two, and we're going to see what's going to come out of this here. Brown rolls out. They're trying to get a little screen set up, a little delay action, trying to catch up with Jairus, Jairus Williams. And the try is no good, so they're still on top, 32 to 7. We'll be back with more action headed your way. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. To find out what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, from school news to weather alerts, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, mcpsstowire.com. Mobile County Public Schools, learning today, leading tomorrow. Leading right now, it's Blunt on top of Viger, 32 to 7 with 5.05 remaining in the third quarter. 
Stryverson about to kick this one off after reeling in that touchdown pass from LaMarcus Brown. Taken by Benjamin Bennett coming up to about the 36, 37 yard line, Court. Yeah, it's a situation now if you're the Wolfpack, 456 remaining here in the third quarter. We have an injured Blunt Leopard on the field. Try to get a number of him. Looks like number 12, Kel Smith down. In some pain right now as he's taking his helmet off. Get the trainers to stop by and take a look at him. Last year, Blunt averaged 20.6 points on offense. That was down a full touchdown from 2017 and only gave up 13.8 points on defense. So tonight, starting off the season pretty good on top 32 to seven, Gore. Yeah, I mean, 32 to seven, our score here in the third quarter with 456 remaining. It's been really all the Leopards from the time that Viger was able to make it seven to six and take the lead at seven to six. That's right. Nothing really positive has happened. You see a couple of spurts here and there, but this again is a young Wolfpack team that depending, it's not how they play tonight, it's how they play in week number 10 or 11, trying to win 5A region one, which is no easy task, but this is a young team with reps. As Viger continues to play throughout the season, I would much rather play the Viger Viagra Wolves now than to play them in week number 10. Let's take sure. a look at their schedule. You're, top, you're right about that, Corey. And that's one thing Coach Scott says. He says he'll know his team as he gets later on into the season. So here's a look at their schedule. Going on the road next week to Wilcox Central, then to Satsuma. And then they'll get their first home game against Jackson September 20th. So think about that. You're going three weeks before you even get to go to Pritchard Stadium. Yeah, you're definitely being road tested. And that's a situation that, unfortunately, with this young team, you don't control. You have lost so many seniors one year ago and then now dealing with the ill-timed death of one of your starters, Patrick Crawford. Right. It's a situation to where I guarantee this Viger team will rally. You won't see the same type of Wolfpack team in week one that you'll see in week 10. Remember a couple of years ago, they started off 0-3, 0-2. Sure did. And they were able to still win that region. So this is a much younger Viger team, but as the season goes along, they will continue to improve. You're right about that. We'll get started here. First down for the Viger Wolves. Sidney Williams fumbles the snap as he tried to hand that one off. And that goes nowhere but backwards, Corey. Dropping that ball, Brennan May, John, Brennan May Jordan as they try to they flip things around there just timing not correct on that play. And when you have a quarterback who's used to just taking the snap and running instead of handing it off, sometimes that does happen. You know the starting quarterback for the Viagra Wolves coming in tonight was Brennan May Jordan, the 5'10", 160 pound sophomore. Sidney Williams is playing both sides of the football. He's playing wide receiver and defensive back. So you know he's probably a little bit fatigued and tired as well. Williams decides to keep it and heads up with a full head of steam up the middle, determined not to be brought down. And he makes something out of nothing with that run, Corey, and gets some positive yardage. Just absolutely shows the type of strength that he has. And again, I would think he would be a little bit fatigued playing both sides of the football, but he just shows on this replay, he goes ahead and decides that there's no one to pass it to, tucks it high and tight, and just plunges over a couple of blunt defenders and then gets yards after contact and gains a few more yards. Looks like now it's gonna bring up third down and about six yards to go. So Blunt has called a timeout here at 3.38, remaining in the third quarter. On that previous two plays right there, you had Brennan May Jordan lined up at the top as a receiver and uh, Williams in, so they've done a couple quarterback switcheroos here the Viagra Wolves have. Let's take a look at the schedule this season for the Blunt Leopards. As you alluded to earlier, Cor, going on the road next week, opening up region play against Robbersdale, and we'll go into the future a little bit. We'll be back here at Harris Terry Stadium as they host rain. And as you look right there, they're going to be pretty much region play all the way through until October when they meet Bryant. 
Yeah, that's huge. It's not going to be it's going to be up to the Leopards not to get into a slow region start. If you're able to come away with this win tonight, you're happy with the battle of Pritchard win, right. but you'll be even more happier positioning yourself to make the playoffs because again, you came one game away having an opportunity to make the playoffs that's against right. Daphne in the last game of the season. It's something that you want to do and strive for this season. Yeah, we had that game last year where they played Sierra Land and lost it here that night in overtime. And the next week, it was a win and get in game. And Daphne got that victory. And Blunt was the team, the odd team looking out, along with Baldwin County having a positive record but not making the playoffs. So Coach Holly and his staff, they know what's in front of them and they know what they have to do. And right now, Sidney Williams know what he has to do, and that's avoid the leopards. And look at him stretching out, Corey. Maybe enough for the first down, depending on where they spot this at. On that second spin move, he hit the circle button on the PlayStation and was able to go ahead and I think extend that play. It's going to be interesting to see where they spot the football. I do see a flag on the play. It's right. going to be held holding against the Wolfpack. I do believe that is all for not. That nice extra yards after contact is going to be taken back. All that extra work, like one of his favorite athletes, Floyd Money Mayweather, he was doing the spin move and doing some juking, but it's uh, all for naught right there. Is this is coming back against the Viger Wolves? Offense, ten yard penalty, repeat third down. So it'll be third and long for the Viger Wolves. Let's head down to the sideline. Kim has an injury update for us. I was able to um, catch up with player number 12 for the Blunt Leopards and see what kind of injury he sustained earlier when he was um, limping off of the field. And it looks to be an ankle injury. It was more than just a cramp. Um, they actually are putting ice on it. They were getting him to try to rotate his um, ankle on his own and he was in a lot of pain. So they're trying to ice that down and hopefully wrap it up so he can get back in this game. Thanks Kimberly, we appreciate that on that play. Brennan made Jordan with a little quick out and that play went nowhere, and it's gonna take Viger to fourth down, and they'll be punting again. And as I mentioned earlier, our good friend, Mr. Thaddeus Williams, back on the field, Corey. Yeah, he's been busy tonight, Al. Hopefully this ball goes end over end to gain yards for the Wolfpack. Jordan Harris Mitchell faking some of the Viger Wolves out, and he gets the ball up to the 35 yard line as Blunt will take over. Got to let you know, school days, school days, the calendar, keep in mind, September 2nd, Labor Day, schools will be closed. And, Corey, I love how this graphic has a little heat to it, reminding us that uh, we are still in <laughs> summer. So uh, learning today and leading tomorrow, and I do know that it's typically hot around Labor Day, but school will be closed. Yeah, and that's a great thing I know the kids are looking forward to and get a little three-day weekend going in, but football players will be out grinding and out here in the heat. Yeah. And the band does a great job as well in all the fall sports that are taking place right now. But now you look at this scoreboard with 2.20 remaining here in the third quarter. The Blunt Leopards leading 32 to seven over the Wolf Pack. And it's gonna cost the Leopards a few more yards, but they're yeah. okay with that because again, they're just looking to extend this game. But you want to look at this lethal Leopard mentality that I know Coach Holly wants to build because when you get a team down, he wants to go ahead, even though this is the first game of the season, he wants to see his team respond in a positive manner right. and continue to keep doing what they do well. 2.20 remaining here in the third quarter. First and 10 for Blunt. Well, Marcus Brown looking to air it out. And that ball is intercepted by Sidney Williams of Viger. He's on the move trying to get some yardage. And they force him out at about the 32 yard line. So of course, Sidney Williams having an impact on offense and defense tonight for Viger. Yeah, you look at that throw right there by LaMarcus Brown as we take a look at the replay. Just needed to lead his wide receiver a little bit further, but you look at the hops of Sidney Williams. We've seen his versatility at the quarterback position, and he'll probably come right back out here as soon as he takes a quick breather because on the other side of the football, Michael Towner Jr. earlier gave Sidney Williams that little breather, but Sidney did a great job of high pointing that football, but if you're the quarterback, you would like to see LaMarcus Brown throw that ball and lead the wide receiver a little further down the field to avoid that interception. Brennan May Jordan 
Back to take the snap, but before he can do that, flag comes out. Two oh four remaining here in the third quarter. So it looks like offsides against Blunt, so that'll be a free five yards for the Viger Wolves. Join Home Room with Renee Phillips and find out the latest homework tips and what's happening inside the schools and classrooms. It's Home Room with Renee Phillips right here on the MCPSS TV network. Big play right there by Lee Hunter, somebody's name we haven't All on called. It in a long time, but All it's a situation it. to where he's demanded a double team and he makes himself and his presence known here as we have 145 remaining here in the third quarter. And you're right about that, Corey. Haven't called his name too many times tonight. A lot of the other Leopards we have made mention of on that defensive side, Jamar Booker, Sidney Collins, and your man Leslie Dewberry here, who's been doing this thing tonight. So Mr. Hunter has been fiending off those double teams. Second and about five here, no gain on the play for Viger. As May Jordan is surrounded by backs. Hands it off up the middle, and that looks to be like a maybe a one-yard gain if they're kind enough to, uh, to the Wolfpack. Yeah, it's a situation now, if you're the Wolfpack with one minute remaining here in the third quarter, you have a player that's going to go down almost to midfield, that's probably a, cramping up. Benjamin Bennett there on and the that's carry. that's huge. He's hurting. I don't know if it's a cramp or what have not, but he definitely ran to the 45-yard line and definitely right. took a knee immediately. Stay with us. We'll be announcing our player of the game later on. We're going to have a couple discussions there, Corey. I think you have a pretty good idea of who it will be tonight. There's been one particular guy who's been pretty dominant, so we'll be discussing the, uh, the player of the game coming up later on inside the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's a situation to where there's a couple of players that we could possibly be thinking about, but, you know, right now the Blunt Leopard offense has really – dominated this game and the defense has not done a shabby job either I mean you look at the defense one year ago they gave up 13.8 points per game which isn't too bad that's right when you look at overall playing 10 games but I tell you what defensive coordinator Alex Brown coached the defensive line last year he's now in his fourth year with this yeah. leopard program and you know he has to be excited what he's seen so far and the type of talent that he's able to coach on this defense as well so Bennett has to go out for at least one play. And Viger is surprisingly right there at about third and four. May Jordan rolls out, and he's trying to connect downfield and cannot get through to Jeremy Labazon. Incomplete, that'll take Viger to fourth down. Sidney Williams coming back into the game right now. Decision time for Coach Scott. Too close to punting and too far away to attempt a field goal, Corey, kind of in that no man's land area. Yeah, again, we're talking about the Battle of Pritchard here being 32 to 7. You look across the way as we're about to start the fourth quarter. A lot of the Wolfpack fans have gone ahead and decided to exit the premises, but the Leopard fans are sticking around. They want to see that presentation of that trophy, and Viger's just not really able to get anything done on fourth down. Is it will be a turnover on downs, and the Leopards will take over. So handoff to Williams right there goes nowhere and ball over on downs as we are less than 21 seconds away from starting the fourth quarter. And Corey, as the camera pans over to the visiting sidelines, I did notice that it was kind of clearing out over there for the Viga Wolf faithful and you brought it up and I just been thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, 21.9 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. 
the Leopards go ahead and take over. And what you want to see right here is them not turn the football over to go ahead and establish their dominance from here at the end of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter. I know Coach Lev Holly and offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson would love to take as much time off of the clock as possible and give some different guys an opportunity to get into the game. Right, that means we would have to go deep into our C2C roster because a lot of those guys yeah. getting in aren't typically on the too deep chart for us, Corey. So I think uh, as the score continues to be where it is, if uh, Viger doesn't make a imprint here we're going to start seeing some uh, new names tonight. yeah you already see back up cameron mckinney now the sure 510, 180 pound senior handing the ball off and you're exactly right running back Savon davis jones also in the game now for the leopards and we're about to start the fourth quarter here in the battle of pritchard that is the end of the fourth quarter with blunt on top 32 to 7 in the battle of pritchard and right now, Corey, we gave the question out a while ago, so we'll revisit it now. The game of the week brain buster question. We'll get that question up there for you. I know you've been thinking about it. Viger and Blunt have combined to produce three Mr. Footballs in the state. Corey and the Bounty, can you name them? Well, I can give you one. All right. DeMarco McNeil for okay. the Blunt Leopards. Do you, know what, football. you know what year it was, Corey? DeMarco McNeil would have been probably early 2000s. Early 2000s. Uh, if I had to guess. I'm going to say, look, there's so many opportunities. D.D. Green is down on the sidelines for the Blunt Leopards in his 86 jersey. He was on the 90s Blunt Dynasty team. But Electron Williams, Daryl Electron Williams, I would think would be one of the Viagra winners as well. So All I right. know I have one of them, DeMarco McNeil. All right, Corey, DeMarco McNeil, you off a couple of years, 1998. Daryl Electron Williams, 10 years earlier for Viagra, did it in 1988. And Tommy Compton in 1982. Now here's a plus, we call it in TV, a plus one. What distinguishes one of those winners, Corey? Well, I know two of them put on an Auburn uniform. Okay. Uh, DeMarco McNeil and Electron Williams, okay. but I'm not sure what would distinguish. What distinguishes these winners? Tommy Compton was the first ever Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. That's when the Alabama sports writers decided to go ahead and start that award That's, in 1982. He was, he was the first one ever awarded Mr. Football, of course. So there's your plus one. There you I, can't, go. I can't give you one of those every week. Yeah, now, look, two out of three, <laughs> that's not too bad. I don't think I failed the test. No, 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 no. I'm just saying I can't. I mean, well, I have an extra is, for you every no, no, week. No, no, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good, yeah, though. That Tommy is. Compton, first Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. And he was lighting it up back then, Corey. And, and you have to be to get those type of numbers of Mr. Football. Now, Blunt decides to run the ball with Titus Smith out of his fullback position. Right. The 5'9", 235-pound senior gets an opportunity to try to move the sticks on the far sidelines from where we're located here at Harris Terry Stadium. And right now, as we talked about earlier, just as the third quarter ended, a lot of the reserves, if you want to call them, they're going to get some action right now. They're going to get some uh, good reps right here. There's no preseason for high school football and college ball. You start week one, you start. So so this is a good opportunity for some of those Leopards deep in the roster to uh, come in and uh, see some action tonight. Yeah, and, and you just see a steady dose now of Blunt deciding to go ahead and run the football. And then it's going to be up for the Wolfpack to go ahead and stand up and try to dominate the line of scrimmage. And Vigers just absolutely gassed. They just don't have anything in the tank right now. Trailing 32 to 7. You know, if Blunt bust one past the line of scrimmage, Al, I wouldn't be so surprised if I you wouldn't. don't see one of them go to the house, especially now that Blunt is able to start rotating in new bodies at different positions. LaMarcus Brown back in in the quarterback position. They're getting, uh, giving Jarris Williams a break. And they have... Savon Davis Jones in. There seems to be an official sending one of the blunt players to the sidelines. Maybe his equipment is out of sorts or something. And they're asking for another guy to come in. Like, hurry up, hurry up, come on, come on. Because the play clock, well, they've actually delayed it right now, so it hasn't started. So number 57 for Blunt had to go out of the game. Kentrell Dorch. And they brought in someone else. So of course, maybe that was an equipment issue going on with him. Second down for the Blunt Leopards as they approach the midfield stripe. That ball handed off to Davis Jones. No gain on the play, it'll go to third down. 
And again, you're talking about the Battle of Pritchard, two historic programs, eight state championships that you mentioned at the top of the broadcast in between the two schools. The 90s was the decade to where there was so much dominant by the purple and white. They right. win state championships in 90, 92, 96, 97, and 98. And I just want to give a shout out to Ben Harris, my guy who's watching hopefully at home and recuperating oh, yeah. a little bit. Want to wish Coach Harris the best. Always a pleasure to talk to him as I did earlier today. Third and about five here for the Blunt Leopards. Brown throwing it out to Cameron Grays and it Drops off the fingertips, you know, to take Blunt to fourth down. We talked about the loss of the young man for Viger, Patrick Crawford, just last week, devastating loss for them. But also the Blunt family experienced a loss over the summer, this past summer, Corey, when they're longtime faithful supporters. Folks, folks may remember an uh, older guy would always be with them, Mr. Frank, Frank Coleman. He was a former Blunt player, and he passed away this summer, and I had a chance to talk with Coach Jones and Coach Harris and a couple of the Blunt players who came out to the funeral. So, you know, when you notice about high school football, there's always a guy who hangs around, an older or younger guy, and that was the guy for the Blunt Leopards, Mr. Coleman. He passed this past summer. So Coach Holly talked about it in media days, the impact he had on him and his crew as he would always sit in the end zone and say, one time for the Blunt Leopards, one time. <laughs> Sydney Williams right there grasping the kick, the punt, and takes it. And that was Jarris Williams on the punt there, Cole. It's a situation to where you're looking at penalty flags being thrown on the field. Right. This last 9-21 of the fourth quarter, you want to make sure a couple of things happen now. You want to make sure that you're not being sloppy and right. you go ahead and clean things up and finish the game healthy because you want to go into region play next week 100% healthy. Yes, this is the Battle of Pritchard. Yes, it means so much to so many who have carried both of these schools. And again, these schools were exactly close to one mile apart a little over a decade ago. Let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly Dunn has a guest with her. Yes, we have a lot of great help this year, and one of the people that's helping us do grip and has been running the whole game is Alvin Giroux. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. It's been an awesome, awesome night. It's been awesome. Yeah, and you're actually a senior here at Blunt High School, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I am. Good. So what do you think about the game so far? Are you enjoying it? What is it like being able to be this close to your teammates and your classmates? It's been a cool and exciting game. It's been really fun, really fun, and long, real long. But it's been pretty good, though. Yeah, so I know you have big plans and a big future ahead of you. So will you tell us a little bit about what you plan to do in the future and how Blunt High School is helping you prepare for that? Well, I plan on going to trade school to become a real estate agent. And also, I would love to major in broadcast journalism in college. So Blunt has really pushed me to be the best at what I do and has various trade programs that I can use to my ability and to my advantage. All right, well, thank you so much. Continue to enjoy the game and your classmates. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. The young man did a good job on the interview, Corey. And one thing he's very observant about in broadcasting, this has been a long game. It has been a long game, and that's because of the few penalties that we've seen early. But, you know, in game number one, they are normally the longest games of the year yeah. because both teams, even the referees, are becoming acclimated to high school football once again because it's been some nine-plus months since we've had an opportunity to broadcast the game. But we're excited to be back here again on the MCPSS television network. And also keep in mind the heat timeout. So that's a guaranteed four stops you're going to have under six minutes in these first four quarters. So you add that time. And tonight there was a little bit of a um, little melancholy in the air as uh, both teams wanted to honor the fallen player, too. So we had some uh, some breaks for that. But, uh, yeah, Corey, typically we don't we don't get into the 930 time here at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. But we have to start off, so we're having a good time tonight. Coming up soon, we'll have our player of the game, and uh, we're having some discussions. But right now, players are discussing things on the wrong manner on the field. A helmet has come off on one of the Viger Wolves. Maybe he threw his helmet off, Corey. You know you're not allowed to do that. So uh, looks like number 55 upset there, Jacoby Marks for the Wolves. And flag just 
littered the field. Yeah, it's a situation where you know the officials are going to see that very quickly, and they're going to be on top of that. But with 8.29 remaining here in the fourth quarter, you can't let your frustrations no. get the best of you. You just want to go ahead, get out of here again, penalty free for the duration of the game. Not only penalty free for the duration of the game, you don't want to have any ejections or anything else going on within the duration of this contest. Got to thank our folks at Firehouse Subs for providing us the good East tonight. They've joined on board with us this season, and uh, we really appreciate all the things that they do in the area, and also future ones for taking care of us, remaining on with us for another season. And Corey, once again, the crew t-shirts looking very nice, very nice, and I appreciate the uh, North Carolina, North Carolina blue. Even though I'm a Duke fan, but I like the I like the North Carolina blue on me tonight from Future One. What a great combination, Future Ones and feeding the crew. So the crew looks good and they eat good. So two great sponsors. We're very happy to have. You're right about that. So referees sorting things out here. They're going to march off that penalty against Viger. Dead ball, personal foul, white team. So that's a big 15 against Viger, and it pushes Blunt closer to the end zone. It's one of those situations to where the Leopards just trying, you know, to, to, to make the Viger Wolves at this point in time bend but don't break mentality. But you must be observant of the whistles, and you have to look at the situation to where 32 to 7 is our score here at Harris Terry Stadium. The, the Viger Wolves just really want to try to get a little momentum going into next week's contest, which is a region game for them. You look at Wilcox Central as we showed him the schedule earlier. A couple of back-to-back -back dead ball penalties that have been caught in this game. And again, you just want to clean that up here the last 8.20 of the fourth quarter. So third down here for Viger. And that maybe picks up maybe a half of yards, so it'll take it a fourth down as we approach the eight minute mark remaining here in the ball game. And coming out to punt once again, Thaddeus Williams with the Viger Wolves is setting up to return. Armani Diamond and Jordan Harris Mitchell for the Blunt Leopards. Low snap on the ground. All Williams can do is fall on it at about the four yard line. So a special teams miscue against Viger. Which is something that we really haven't seen all game long yeah. in regards to the punting situation and the yeah. kickoff situation. We've seen miss extra points and failed two point conversions, but that aspect of the special teams we really haven't seen uh, really hurt the Viger Wolves, but now, now it's a short field. You'll start to see a lot of backups come into the game these next couple of sessions for the Leopards with 727 here in the fourth quarter. A short, short field. As you look at LaMarcus Brown kind of hobble onto the field, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. he does anything besides hand the football off in this short goal line red zone situation. Yeah, I'm surprised Brown is actually still on the field uh, playing right now, Core. With Blunt with a commanding lead. But he's getting some valuable reps. But right now, a timeout has been called by Lev Holly. Maybe he didn't like the formation. They did send a player in late. So they just called a timeout. They're going to bring it over to the sidelines and discuss things. The mission of Mobile County Public Schools is to graduate prepared and productive citizens. The vision is to become a premier educational system where students engage in multiple pathways leading to success in a global society. Mobile County Public Schools, learning today and leading tomorrow. Corey, you talked about it earlier, the Viger faithful pretty much having cleared out. 
I think the largest group I see over there representing them right now is the band. Without question. And you're still playing. Yeah, you're trailing 32 to 7. The band never trails at either one of these schools. They just love to go back and forth. And I tell you what, the purple and white is still in the stands. Man, yeah. Right up under us here Man, at Harris yeah. Terry Stadium. And again, the Leopards trying to add six more to the scoreboard here in the fourth quarter. Blunt in the pistol formation, hand that off to Davis Jones. He gets a barrel of steam and gets up to about the one yard line and collapses down, but I believe he's he's okay. He hops right back up. It's a situation too. You look at right at this goal line, Sidney Williams for Viger at the top of our screen grimacing. You can tell he's been playing the entire game, so he's definitely cramming, but this guard, this ball is gonna go between guard and tackle if you're the Blunt Leopards. Second and goal back to Davis Jones. That Viger Wolves defense stands him up, and he does not cross into the end zone. Great camera shot going right down the goal line as there's a lot of action taking place. You look at the replay, the push by the defensive line, nothing but white jerseys all around the runner for the Blunt Leopards. And again, now we're gonna come into a situation to where it's gonna be third down and goal to go as the Leopards have an offensive lineman getting up rather slowly. Looks like it may be Jaharvey Chapman Reese struggling to get to his feet, but he's able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Right. And he's gonna be substituted out because the referees had to stop the clock. Yeah, he's limping off there. So he may need a little assistance to get to the sideline. I think the trainer's headed over to him. There's the ball boy grabbing him right there. Third and goal right here for the Blunt Leopards, and they got the big, goal, big boys in. Brandon Easterling lining up right there in the halfback slot, and they're putting the big force through there, and that's enough to get through for the touchdown, Corey. LaMarcus Brown keeps it for about the one-yard keeper there and extends the lead over Viger, 38 to seven. A nice push by the offensive line down at probably close to the three or four yard line. And that was huge. That was a huge play by the Blunt Leopards adding another six. As sometimes you're getting valuable reps. You take a look at that replay. Blunt put six more on the board with 6.32 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Now are leading the Wolfpack. And it appears as if Coach Howell is going to try this uh, PAT, try to get some things together. Brown on to attempt the point after. They haven't made one tonight. And a low snap, so 0 for 3 on the PATs tonight, Corey, but still on top, 32 to 7. More action headed your way with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Don't move. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Executive producer Quentin Howard, director Wade Ford. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corley Bounty atop the press box of Harris Terry Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard and Corey. Blunt on top, 38 to seven. Let's have a little discussion here. Who do you think uh, you have in mind for your player of the game tonight, Corey? Well, I tell you what, offensively, the Leopards have been pretty productive. LaMarcus Brown has played a pretty outstanding game. Okay. Jairus Williams has run the football extremely hard. Uh, you have a couple of offensive linemen who have really opened up some holes as well. Gotcha. So in this situation, I, I definitely think that it's going to go to a blunt offensive player I gotcha. to get an outstanding of uh, kudos from us and the crew to be our game's most valuable player. But don't don't forget, keep in mind, you, you talked about Mr. Dewberry on defense. He a couple has. Times he, tonight. He's had a couple of decleating tackles. He's made his presence known. Right, and right. You know, you have a sky kickoff that's going to be a live football, and the Leopards are going to get on top of it. You're on top of it. The returner for Viger didn't wrap it up, and that ball bounced off of his foot, and that is going to be a blunt ball. So Arthur Jackson muffs the uh, kickoff there. 
So coming up shortly, we'll reveal to you who's going to be our player of the game. We had a little discussion there, so we'll let the guys in the truck and the young ladies in the truck discuss things, and we'll get that to you shortly. 6.31 remaining here in the contest. Take a look at the replay right there, Corey. Coming straight to you. A sky kick, nice and high, and you, you once the ball goes 10 yards, it is a live ball, so you have to feel that or get away from it That's right. and let it bounce to you because you know the pursuit is coming. The lanes that the Leopards are running, they're going to try to get on top of that football. They were able to do so. 6.31 remaining now, and again, wholesale changes being made by the Blunt offense. And speaking of change, under center, Cameron McKinney. Haven't seen that in high school in a while, and the snap is fumbled. So they just want to protect the pig skin right now as McKinney goes under center core. I haven't seen that, I don't know in how many years. And we're still going to have our six minute heat timeout that's going to be called here with 6-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Blunt leading Viger 38 to seven here in the Battle of Pritchard. And the referee calls it right there, Corey. Just kind of let the clock <laughs> drift right under six minutes. So we'll take a heat timeout right here along with the rest of the teams, and we'll be back with more action. You're watching the Battle of Pritchard on the MCPSS TV network. Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Diesel is a very big industry, and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, with all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. We welcome you back to the Battle of Pritchard. Second down for the Blunt Leopards. Low snap there as Cameron McKinney scoops it up, and he's on the move, Corey, at the 20 to 15, headed toward the 10 and out of bounds, so he makes something out of nothing on the miscue there. Yeah, you look at the situation to where you are fresh, and the Viagra Wolfpack team has been out there for quite a long time, the defense that is. It's another red zone situation coming up for the Leopards, and not to take anything away from Viger, because again, this is a very, very young Viger team who is dealing with a tragedy and adversity in the death of Patrick Crawford. And I know the coaching staff's minds has been somewhere else, and it's hard to take that focus, because I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, there's no playbook that Coach yeah. Eric Scott has to deal with the type of tragedy that Viger's had to deal with this week yeah. in the death of Pat Patrick Crawford Jr. But, you know, the scoreboard, regardless of the situation of what the final score will be, the impact that Viger it's not how you start, it's gonna be how you finish. You're right about that, Corey, and I can't believe it, but I think the play clock, hope it may have run out, but it's not a malfunction. I think this may be our first delay of game. It is. Of the whole contest, I can't believe it. And here's the situation to where Blunt wants to run the clock out, but yeah. you have to be aware that when that ball is spotted and that 40 second clock starts, you have to be ready to snap the ball. You can run it down to one second left, but you have to be ready to snap the ball. Davis Jones on the carry for the Leopards. Corey just talked about uh, the loss that Viger went through and also losing all those seniors. Coach Derek Scott talked about the fact of losing those 21 starters, and he said, 
you know, folks in Pritchard, they don't care how many kids you graduated or lost. They just want to know, did you win Friday night? So he, he already knows that this loss, if he takes this loss tonight, it, it, it's just a building point because he really gets to see his team as he gets into week three and week four, how they develop and how they adjust to situations like this. Yeah, that's a situation to where both coaches are glad to get this robbery out of the way. Week one is a situation to where this robbery used to be played in the last game of the season. It did. And I know you asked both coaches about that in the pregame, and they had something interesting to tell you. Yeah, Coach Scott said he would prefer if this game was played in the middle of the season, like week five or week six. Gives him a good gauge. Also does put the pressure at the end of the year where you're trying to rest your starter, say, if you're playoff bound. But Coach Liv Holly, you know, you, you can never call it when he said, man, I don't care when we play it. First game, second game, fifth game, eighth game, I just play it. So whenever, whenever it's on the schedule, I'm going to play. So two totally contrasting different answers there. Yeah, Coach Holly definitely said he learned from his team each and every week last year, and he thinks that will apply to this year's team as well. Again, we mentioned earlier that Blunt went 5-5 five and five a year ago and did not make the playoffs. On the other hand, Varga went 13-2 and two and had an opportunity to play for the state championship game and came up second short and moments away from carrying away that blue map and bringing the state championship back to Pritchard, Alabama. So it's a situation that CF Varga High School is definitely trying to refocus because Coach, again, did didn't call it rebuild. Not a rebuild, it's a he refocus. He said it's, it's a refocus yeah. year, and even though this game comes out a little bit blurry on the scoreboard, if you're a Wolfpack fan, it will ultimately, you'll get your 2020 vision back as the season goes along. May Jordan hands that off to Towner, up the middle he goes, bullying his way for a couple of yards, and Corey, I have to say, I'm impressed with the young man right there. He's a freshman, he's a big kid. Kind of puts me in the mindset of another freshman we saw last year down the street at Williamson, Mr. Robert Woodyard. Kind of big guy, not as big as Woodyard, but, but he's getting some early reps here in the season. I think by the time we get into week seven, week eight, if uh, Towner stays healthy, he's going to be a good contributor to the Wolfpack. In my checklist at the beginning of the game, we wanted to know who was going to be the man. Who was yeah. going to be the man for Viger, the next person up? Because when you put power five guys out there and you lose 10 out of 11, you're going to have somebody to step up to the plate. In this situation, it has been Michael Towner Jr. He's 6'1", 220, and a freshman, and he's showing you that he's going to be a great player for the Wolfpack. He's lined up at running back. He's played a little quarterback tonight, so he's shown his versatility for Coach Derek Scott, and that's going to be very important. As a freshman, those valuable reps that you're getting early will pay dividends later in the season. 4-20-22 remaining here in the ball game. First down for Viger as they're continuing to trudge on, even though they are down in Towner, running the rock for the Wolves, close to another first down. Yeah, and if they're able to pick up a first down, again, the clock will continue to run. The Leopard defense doesn't want to give up any more points. As, again, I tell you who doesn't want to give up anything as well, that's the Blunt Band who's doing a wonderful job putting oh, a performance man. right up here to our right here at the top of Harris Terry Stadium. Yeah, Corey, they are wearing us out here, bringing the uh, high fidelity sound that they can do, the Marching Leopard Band. May Jordan tosses it out to Towner. He tries to hop over, but he gets a no gainer. The next week, make sure you join us. We're taking it to the legendary Lad People Stadium. It's LaFleur versus Williamson. And remember our new start time. We go live at 6.50. So join us next Friday, LaFleur versus Williamson. And again, Williamson had an opportunity to get a jamboree game in yesterday, played Chickasaw yeah. High School. LaFleur is down at Tremere Park today. Last time we checked, they were trailing the BC Rain Red Raiders. Chris Raymond in his second tenure as head coach of the LaFleur Rattlers. Look forward to seeing that matchup at historic Ladd Stadium. You're right about that. That was third down for Viger. And it appears as if they had enough to get the first down, so the sticks are going to move. Two 40 remaining here in the fourth quarter, 38 to seven. 
the Leopards leading here in the Battle of Pritchard. And it's a situation to where I know both coaches just want to use as much time as possible off the clock. 13 seconds remaining on the play clock here on the field. And it's a situation to where Viger just again wants to stay healthy and get a little momentum going into a region game next week. All right, of course, time to look at our player of the game. We had a discussion about it, and uh, we're going to see uh, who came up. I have a pretty good idea who it's going to be. Our Career Tech Education Player of the Game. Corey, you, you, you nailed it there. Jairus William with the Blunt Leopards. Man, he was working hard and building his future tonight. Had an awesome game. Yeah, Jairus Williams almost had 1,200 yards rushing a year ago as a sophomore. Has offers from Tennessee, Kentucky, South Alabama, UAB, Troy. And right now he's ranked the number 10 player in the class of 2021 for the Blunt Leopards. He's also a versatile receiver, 12 receptions, 234 yards, and two touchdowns one year ago. He's looking to build on that. You mentioned earlier that he looks like he's lost a little bit of that weight yeah. going into now his junior season. So congratulations to Mr. Williams. Go ahead and getting our first player of the game of the season. Less than one minute remaining here in the contest. Viger close to another first down. If they award it to him, that will stop the clock and they'll reset and we'll probably have maybe two more plays and we'll be out of here. So that is a first down for the Viger Wolves with less than one minute remaining. And Corey, I looked and I saw a minute and by the time Santee Gamble said first down, the clock was already running. So yes. I think some communication between the officials tonight is taking place. Yeah, no, no need to stop it here at 9.55 at night. Wow. Go ahead and let the game get over with as we started at 7 o'clock. It's almost like a college kickoff here in game number one of the high school football season on the MCPSS television network. So the last time Viger beat Blunt was in 2012. They defeated them. 21 to 13 and the next year Blunt won 40 to 13 so this is almost reminiscent our score tonight final score is going to be 38 to 7 as Blunt recaptures the Battle of Pritchard Court. Yeah that's big time that's a big time win for the Blunt Leopards as they're in a situation now Al to where they're going to try to get the Battle of Pritchard behind them yeah. they'll take this win they lost one year ago now they have that win back under their belt it's a situation for Viger though. I love the way that they came out and showed resiliency. Remember our score was seven to six sure was. in the middle of the first quarter. And then the Leopards just kind of took over and dominated, rushing the football. Blunt was not able to stop the penalties. I know that's something that Lev Holly will want to clean up from right. a special teams and penalty standpoint. But the Battle of Pritchard is always a historic battle. And again, this being the second worst loss for Viger ever in this series it's kind of shocking but in a way when you're replacing as many players as the Viking Wolves did yeah. the scoreboard does not show how much work and how much adversity this Wolfpack Nation has been through this last week. Yeah, it's been a tough week for them but they held tough tonight and as you just talked about Cord, they, they actually led the game seven to six for a brief period there but Blunt came back and they, you can kind of say they warmed down warmed down a lot of penalties there for the Leopards. I'm sure Coach Holly's not happy about that because you got to play mentally tough. And you know he has that culture mentality here where you got to own up to your responsibilities. So very important that they work on that as they go to Robertsdale next week. And Viva on the road going to Wilcox Central. Both of these teams going into region play. The brick by brick mentality. And that's the type of culture Coach Lev Holly had. Blunt Leopards with the 2016 region champions. They're trying to ascend back to that throne in right. 6A Region 1, and what better way than to get the Battle of Pritchard started off with the W for the Blunt Leopards. Oh yeah, great action tonight. The fans were here, the tailgating was here. We even had some uh, leftover smoke from the charcoal that we thought was fog, but it smelled too good to be fog, or it was leftover from the barbecue. And the great thing too, Al, is the weather. The rain held off when game time it started. It actually did, yeah. It sprinkled in the pregame and sprinkled all day long, but the field was a little bit slippery. But again, the conditions overall, besides being humid, now that both teams have gotten a game under their belt, they'll right. know exactly what to work on and how to correct those mistakes for next week. 
All right, let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. She has our player of the game and the winning coach, Lev Holly, as well. And she's going to discuss with them the great action they did tonight down for this football game. Go ahead, Kim. I'm here with the coach and the pigskin player of the game tonight. So I just want to, we've been hearing your name all night. So I want to get how you're feeling right now. And what does this moment mean to you to get this first win of the season? I feel great. I feel like we did good. My team played good. Was out, we got the win, so. Yeah, that was a great job tonight and a great effort by this player and by the team as a whole. What are some things that um, you feel like you can improve upon for next week's game? Man, we just got to clean up things, and I take full responsibility that I know it got kind of, kind of emotion, you know what I mean? But we got to be able to hold up all, all emotion and be poised in every situation. So we got a lot of work. We're not where we want to be right now. But, hey, this is just week one. So, hey, we'll take the win. But I'm proud of my guy, proud of my assistant coaches. They get this win. Our prayers go out to Coach Scott and that whole program and the Valley High School family. And uh, we know it's tough. We know they're playing with a lot on them. And we just want to let them know, man, that we're praying with them and that we love them. Oh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations again on the win, and congratulations on being the player of the game. Thank you. Corey, great respect show right there by Coach Holly. Talked about his players, but also talked about the importance of Viger High School and what it means to them and uh, showing his sympathies as well. Without question, I mean, you know, this game goes out to the memory of Patrick Crawford Jr. His funeral will be tomorrow. Now it's a situation that we're just happy for both teams come out injury free. That's right. Well, next week we're going to take it to legendary Lab People Stadium. It's LaFleur versus Williamson, and we can't wait for that one. We'll get to see Coach Chris Raymond and Coach Lawrence Yeldon go head to head. So join us next week for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. We'll take it to legendary Lab Stadium. But tonight, Blunt gets the win, 38-7. Have yourself a great night.